TNA Wrestling. Cross the line. Being TNA Heavyweight Champion means that you're the best in the whole entire world. It means one thing. It means excellence. It means you're the best in the world. Being the Heavyweight Champion means you're the best that there is, and you're on top of your game. When you look back at the many great champions this company has had, they've exemplified what it meant to be a champion. It means respect. It means the world to me. There's nothing else that I want to do in this world except be TNA World Heavyweight Champion. World Heavyweight Champion. My strengths are obvious. My size, my strength, my athletic background, my athletic ability. I don't have any weaknesses as my strengths, my submission ability, my wrestling ability. Nobody can match that. Who wants it more than me? Who wants this belt more than me? Who's going to do anything it takes to take this belt from me? I'll tell you who, nobody. I am the very best. I've proven that in my last eight years. Every single year, I've been champion of the world, no matter where I've been. And I'll continue to be every single year that I wrestle. Nobody will do what it'll take to take this belt away from me. Samoa Joe and Scott Steiner, I've proven that I'm a much better athlete, a much better wrestler than either of you. Come sacrifice, you'll make the ultimate sacrifice when I choke you both out in the middle of that ring. Small Joe, Kurt Angle's size does matter, and you don't match up to me physically, and you don't match up to me mentally. You're getting in the ring with Kurt Angle, the greatest wrestler on this planet. Not only that, but I'm in the best shape of my life. So when I get in that ring, you guys better be ready, ready to go, ready to fight, ready to rumble, because Kurt Angle is going to walk out the champion. Tonight, champion. Scott Steiner, Big Papa Pump, becomes the TNA World Champion. You will champion. never, ever take this belt away from me. This belongs to me. This is my property, and I will die, die. before I give this belt up to you. We are expecting Kurt Angle here at the Impact Zone for Sacrifice tonight. Of course, Kurt Angle in the news earlier this week. Kurt, I was with you in South Korea. I saw the injury take place in the ring this last week. What did the doctor say? My doctor, Dr. Joe, does not want me to wrestle. And he made it clear to me that I can't wrestle tonight. As much as I want to go out there at Sacrifice, and win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, which means everything to me. I have to listen to my doctor this time. I'm not 25 years old anymore, and I have the peak of my career in front of me. But if I go in there and I injure my neck again, that might be the end of my career. Now, I won the Olympic gold medal with a broken neck. Everybody knows that. I went to the main event of WrestleMania with a broken neck. Everybody knows that. I won the SmackDown World title with a broken neck. Everyone knows that. I have three cracked vertebrae in my neck right now. I have two herniated discs. Okay, I can't afford to wrestle because my doctor tells me that. If it were up to me, I'd go out there and I'd kick both Steiner and Smojo's ass. But I can't afford it right now. That's the deal. Hey, Scott, a few moments ago, Kurt Angle stated that he would not be able to participate in a three-way title match tonight due to a severe neck injury he suffered while in Korea. How would you like to comment on this? Well, I can't comment on something I don't know anything about. This is the first I've heard about it. You know, Kurt's a great competitor, but I don't trust him and I don't believe him. I'll believe it when I don't see him in the ring tonight. See, everything happens for a reason. Originally, I was supposed to face Small Joe one-on-one. -on -one. So maybe tonight I get what I deserve, a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And everybody knows Samoa Joe can't beat me one-on-one. -on -one. We are expecting Samoa Joe, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion at this time, arriving at the Impact Zone tonight for the Sacrifice pay-per-view, defending the World Heavyweight title tonight. Unfortunately, Kurt Angle, due to doctor's orders, will not be able to compete. Your thoughts? You know, I, 
heard the rumors yesterday. You're telling me Kurt's not going to wrestle tonight. It's official. Well, Kurt, for all your personal shortcomings, you know, it's always a shame to see a great competitor like you go down, especially when I didn't put you there. But that's beside the point. Tonight, I don't care who they put in that ring, JB. I'm still walking out the champion. Yeah. What do you think about Scott Steiner and Kevin Nash arriving to the building tonight? Did that catch you off guard? Did you know about that? You weren't in on this? TNA Wrestling presents Sacrifice. Tonight at Sacrifice, new World Tag Team Champions crown in the Deuces Wild Tournament. Plus, get ready for the debut of the Dangerous Terror Dome. And which TNA knockout gets her head shaved in the Makeover Battle Royal and Ladder Match? And, and due to a neck injury, to the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. It will be the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe, one on one against Big Papa Punk Scott Steiner for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight, live from Orlando, Florida, it is time for the first quarter final. It's the opening match in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first quarterfinal match of the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament to crown new TNA World Tag Team Champions. And it is scheduled for one fall. Introducing team number one from New York City, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team Ray It was nearly a month ago on Impact when Eric Young and Taz defeated AJ Styles and Tonto to win the TNA World You'll recall that after Styles complained to Jim Cornette that it was Super Eric, not Eric Young, that scored the pin. And after Eric Young wouldn't admit that he and Super Eric are the same person, TNA management forced to strip them of the tag team titles, which leads us to tonight's tournament. Sorry about your damn luck. And their opponents first. Accompanied by Jacqueline from Leapers Fork, Tennessee, the Tennessee Cowboy, Team Storm! Well, we now know who the first opponent to Team 3D are going to be. Cowboy Jay Storm and the Icon Sting. The last time we saw Storm and Sting in the rematch, they were trying to kill each other. The last visual, Sting doing a stinger splash on Storm at the table. Tonight, they got to put those differences aside. They've got to fight a way to work together. And they're going to work together. Get the common goal, which of course is the championship belt. That right now, we're sitting here on our announce table that will be worn out of here. Tonight, they got to find a way to work together. And they're going 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 to work together. And his tag team partner from Venice Beach, California. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sting! Has there ever been a TNA pay-per-view in our near six-year existence that has as much intrigue as sacrifice? Everything from the first ever Paradome match to that knockout makeover battle royal where one of the TNA knockouts will get her head shaved to the situation involving Kurt Angle and his neck injury. And Angle not being able to compete tonight in the TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup to the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament where we are really even unsure of, of many of the matches and many of the pairings even though we're already into the sacrifice pay-per-view. Well, Mike, you and I won't even know some of the pairings, well, actually, the, the four remaining, until they're announced. So that's all going to happen later on tonight, but you mentioned it. We saw it earlier when we were here today, the Terror Dome structure. It is the most impressive, scariest thing that you've ever seen. That's later on. But, Mike, i got to tell you, so many people have been talking about this Deuces Wild Tournament. The intrigue is there. All the different matchups are there. The established teams, the new teams, as you see Storm and Sting, and it looks like the communication going well here at the beginning. It's going to have to. It looks like Storm even kind of wants to take the ball here. But, Mike, someone's got to win three matches tonight. 
some team will have to win three matches tonight to come out champion. And you're right, Don, it's just seeing the body language there between the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm, and his partner, the icon, Sting. How about you? Seeing Storm open up this match against Brother Devon, slap to the back of the head. Probably not a smart move by Storm when it comes to waking up Brother Devon and charges right at it. But it almost is as if Storm was trying to be the leader of the team here. Well, he has so much experience in tag team action, especially here in TNA, especially in the six-sided ring, and it really does make a difference. So I like the idea of Storm going out, but Devon just nails him with that flying shoulder coming off the ropes. But James Storm going to have to kind of, I think, wear out Team 3D a little bit, kind of set the stage, and then let King, let Sting come in and clear out. Big scoop and a mid-ring slam by Brother Devon, who comes off the ropes and Whoa. goes airborne before dropping the elbow right into the pinning attempt and a two count from referee Rudy Charles. We talked about the intrigue, Deuce's wild matchup, this tournament consisting of established teams that made their way into the tournament on Thursday Night Impact, like Team 3D. They defeated Relic and Black Rain to move into this tournament matchup. On the other hand, Storm and Sting, this were those wild card teams that were drawn at random. And off the suplex, it's Brother Ray with a near fall on Storm. Well, I'll tell you something, it is going to be so hard for Sting and Storm to beat a team. You talk about established, Team 3D is about as established of a tag team in the history of professional wrestling. And they really are determined to walk out of your champions again. You heard Bubba when he was walking down the ramp, you could see him say 21, 21. Oh, he comes over there, gives Sting a shot to let him know he knows he's in the corner. Referee Rudy Charles, though, keeps Sting from getting in the ring, but right now, Team 3D, confident? Nice move, though, by Storm. Maybe that can start turning the momentum around. I mean, those, oh. chants, those chants of 21 that Brother Ray was talking about, reflecting on Team 3D as we see Jacqueline getting into the ring here to stick up for her man, James Storm. And gets a little smack on the butt from Brother Ray and boots the cowboy hat as well. Well, there's no dirty trick she's going to do that Brother Ray either hasn't done or seen, that's for sure. Right now, though, Storm, what, what the, what's going on here? Is it Storm wanting to tag him in? Yeah, there it is. Sting now gets nope. the tag. No, there's a little reluctance, though, on the part of Sting. I think it really boils down to this trust factor between these two. The 21, Brother Ray referring to, 21 reigns as world tag team champions in, in organizations all over the globe. The problem I'm seeing right now, Mike, with Sting and Storm is the fact that there's no leadership. There's no set leader in this group. Nobody that's just kind of kind of taking the front side, kind of like Brother Ray does with Team 3D. They just know their role so well. And right now you can see, you can see Sting, Storm not on the same page. Oh, I've got a good hip toss there. That'll, that'll turn things around. Look at this. Look at the shriek. Yeah, Sting with the power game, able to scoop and slam Brother Ray. Running clothesline, takes him down, and well, he rolls out to the arena floor to slow down the offense of Sting. And what well, James Storm, we talked about him trying to be the leader. It's exactly what he's doing out from the apron. Well, I'll tell you something, that, you got to lead by example, and that's what Sting just did, led by example. He showed James Storm what you've got to do to get into the mind of Brother Ray and into the mind of Brother Devon. You've got to be fearless with these guys. They work so well together. They'll try to intimidate you, not just with their physical strength. They play more mind games than any tag team I've ever seen. Test of strength here as we see Sting and Devon lock it up. Devon grabs the side headlock and going to try and wear down Sting in anticipation, I'm sure, of eventually getting his partner, Brother Ray, into this contest. Sting going to try and power him off, but no, Brother Devon doesn't allow us. we got that close-up shot, that look at the face of James Storm, and he almost seemed irritated at this point. Well, right now he sees how Devon's got that cinched in, and you can see he's, he's frustrated, he's irritated, he thinks Sting should be able to get out of this, and maybe he's trying to, to yell out there to Sting to get him involved, and that's what Sting just did. Got loose, and then sent Devon to the mat. Well, we've seen Sting come out with the power game, both with the slam for Brother Ray, as well as being able to overpower Brother Devon. And now you see Sting just stomping on the hand, stomping on the fingers of Brother Devon. Well, again, we're trying to figure out the communication. Oh, and that time it cost Sting. Storm yelling at him, yelling instructions, and while he's doing that, broke away, got the tag, came across, and now look at the double team on Sting, and they got him in their corner. And now you see that, that 
blatant choke while Devon goes for the cover, but he had the referee block. He had his body positioned in a way where Rudy Charles was looking at the shoulders but didn't see the choke hold. Sting able to power out before three, but Devon right back to the offense. Series of elbow drops planted right across the chest. Wow, brother Devon right now, brother Ray. Got everything going their way, and again, you see Storm. The body language is unreal. He's walking, and he's walked off of the... Oh, he's sitting now on the mat, he's looking drinking at a the beer. crowd, drinking a beer. Unbelievable. We had a feeling that they'd have communication problems, but this is ridiculous. I mean, this was one of the themes of the Sacrifice pay-per-view event, that in order to get along, in order to become TNA World Tag Team Champions, that you're going to have to sacrifice, but we're seeing right here an example from the Tennessee Cowboy James Storm that's anything but a sacrifice as he's downing another cold one. Well, that's what he's not sacrificing. He's not sacrificing the six-pack. That's for sure. He's going through them one after one. I think Sting now realizes he's on his own at this point, but it's just too much. I mean, those two guys are hard to look around one-on-one, -on -one, let alone one-on-two, -on and another scoop and a slam there by Brother Devon. And after the slam, Devon up, perched on that oh, man. middle rope, and he comes off the top and then comes right two. down with the pin. No, two count. Headbutt, though, right on the head of Sting, and again, James Storm is nonchalant as you can get. Just sucking the cold ones down, showing no concern. Devon to the well a second time with the diving headbutt. No contact made as Sting is able to roll away. But look at his tag team partner, Storm outside, totally indifferent to the entire situation as Sting able to rifle off a series of shots that rocks Devon. And if, if Sting and Storm are gonna win this thing, Sting's gonna have to find a way to be triumphant three times and have a look at it. You can see that anger, that frustration, knowing he doesn't have a partner. Here he goes. Oh, Stinger splash, they get out of the way, and he caught the turnbuckles, and man, brother Ray made him pay. Uh-oh. What's up? Well, that's exactly the move, but what's up from the top, and oh. Devon nails it on Sting, while brother Ray assists. Sting right now, oh, wait a minute, what in the world you can see? Devon going, table. going underneath to grab a table. And the nonchalance of James Storm, we see it once again outside, beer in hand, while his tag team partner getting the hell beat out of it. Well, I mean, what can Sting do to even stave off these guys? You can see him. Oh, double clothesline! Desperation there, Mike! He just came over and almost using the table to brace himself now, and now pulls it more in. Yeah, but look at what happens. He positions the table, he turns around. Both members of 3D right in his face, and now Storm standing behind them. Storm yelling, I, 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 incoherent now after all the beers. And now everybody just looking at Storm even, I think even Team 3's kind of confused as to what's going on. Oh, look at this! Brother Ray, Brother Devon, oh! they say step aside. Wow! Oh, man! And Sting just took him, tossed him across the ring and right through the table. I'll tell you, he couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't take it anymore. Team 3D allowed him to make the move and they get the pin. Here are your winners, Team 3D. And as a result, Team 3D, Brother Ray, Brother Devon, they will move on to the semifinals in the Deuces Wild Tournament with this victory. Storm turned his back on Sting throughout the entire match. You almost can't blame Sting for the reaction. No, I actually like the way that ended, Mike. 3D victorious to the back. Lauren with MMA fighter and TNA analyst Frank Trigg. Take it. Frank Trigg, okay, you and Kurt Angle showed up tonight, but clearly Kurt is not going to be able to participate due to his injury. Can you give us some insight as to exactly what happened to Kurt Angle? Yeah, he was overseas competing, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, got, it's a little confusing right now. He either got thrown under his forehead or got dropped on his forehead, and, and it re-aggravated his, his neck injury. Uh, it's not, remember, this isn't the first time he's hurt his neck, so this is a reoccurring injury that, Man, I'm a little worried because he's not a guy that pulls out. I mean, he's gone, he's wrestled with broken necks. You know, he, he's gone out there and been, you know, competing with a broken foot, a broken hand, not had a problem. He's never pulled out. And then for him to show up, actually, and, and go, yeah, you know, let's, let's try it out. And he worked out a couple days ago. It just wasn't feeling right. Took a couple days rest. We tried some drills today. It, it just isn't, it just isn't what it is. And, and he doesn't want to go out there and take the risk, like, especially against a guy, you know, like Stein or against a guy like Samoa Joe. He's lost a tail, too. He doesn't want to take the risk and not give the fans everything that they're, they're worth seeing. 
then be hurt for months as opposed to just being hurt for weeks. So, we, you know, I want to say we, but ultimately it came down to him. He said, you know, I made a decision. I'm not going to try tonight. I, I just got to pull out, and I feel bad, but he just, he just can't do it. His neck is just too bad. Okay. So with that being said, now it's down to Samoa Joe and Scott Steiner. <laughs> what is your take on this match? You know, I picked against Samoa Joe when he fought Kurt, you know, because, you know, Kurt had beat him so many times before. You know, it's not going to be that difficult to pick against him, you know, again. Uh, he looks so good in that match, though. I mean, he looks so quick. And for his body size and his body shape, you would kind of think that, you know, he's, he's just not going to move as quick as he does. He's so explosive. It's 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 really amazing. But then Scotty Steiner, an All-American from Michigan U, is an amateur wrestler. He's a great True. pro wrestler. He's he's twice as explosive. But I got to give it to, you know, to Samoa Joe. I just have to because he's carrying the belt when he walks in the ring, you know. His, his cardio tends to be a little bit better than Steiner's. And he's carrying a little bit extra weight. So if that comes to a, a fruition of guys leaning on each other and taking that pounding, it's going to be it's gonna be tough for Scotty to keep up with him. But, you know, it's going to be a real good match either way it goes. You know, I'm sorry. I'm a little off right now because I'm more concerned with, with Kurt's neck than I am really with the match beforehand. You mm -hmm. know, with, with uh, Kurt helping me get through my shoulder injuries, my back injuries. I mean, this is a guy that, that helped me get healed up for my fights. And all of a sudden now he's, he's a guy that, that can't compete tonight. So I'm a little, I'm a little more worried with him than I am actually with with the Steiner, you know, Samoa Joe match. But I, I really do think that Samoa Joe is gonna, gonna pull us off again, just cause, you know, he's a title holder. And he, he is, he really is a little bit more explosive than, than Steiner. And, and he seems to have a little bit more technique today than, than uh, I would like to give him credit for. Okay, cool. Well, we're all curious to see what happens. Let's take it back to the ring. And we open with Team 3D's victory. Now it is time for our second quarterfinal in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament new Tag Team Champions round tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second quarterfinal match in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. It is scheduled for one fall. Introducing team number one first, from Wall Street in Manhattan, New York, Robert Rude. Well, this is one of those instances, Don West, where we have one of the wild card teams. Robert Rude at this point in time, not exactly sure who his partner is going to be, but I know that you've narrowed it down. Well, it's going to be either BT James, Booker T, or Awesome Kong, and we won't know until you do with the when the music is played. But think about the different dynamics of, wow. those, of those groups. And I don't even know that that Robert Rude knows who his partner is going to be and who who they're going to be facing. Imagine if it was Awesome Kong of all people, the TNA Knockout Champion. Very intriguing. And his tag team partner from Houston, Texas, Booker T. Almost as if that look on the face of Robert Roode told the entire story. Robert Roode finds out at the same time that all of us do that, yes, his tag team partner is, of all people, his hated rival for months and months here in TNA, Booker T. Yes, the man, if you'll recall, the man whose wife, Charmel, had her jaw shattered at the hands of Robert Roode. The body language that he is showing in that ring, and you thought James Storm and Sting couldn't get along. I mean, this, this to me, seems like an impossibility. And the sad part is, think, if these two people could uh -oh. figure out a way to work together, how deadly they could be, but look at it. It's already started. Holy cow, they can't even get to the opponents. Now, you're right. You question whether Rude and Booker would be able to get along. Any chance to coexist right here, as we saw Booker T drop right down, push Robert Rude on his back. Now, Rude picked up a chair. We've got security in here to separate the tag team partners of all things. And their opponents first from Detroit, Michigan, the War Machine, Bruno! While the wild card team of Robert Roode and Booker T continue their differences right in front of the broadcast position, the War Machine is ready, and here comes his partner. And his tag team partner from Tampa, Florida, by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, he is the instant classic, Christian Cage! Rhino and Christian Cage, another of the established teams in the new 
versus Wild tournament. Unbelievable is the word that Robert Root is saying to us at the broadcast table here. He can't believe it as well. You'll recall that on impact, Rhino, Christian make their way here to sacrifice after they gained a victory over the Motor City Machine Guns. That was quite a match. The difference in this match right here, even more so than the first match, I really believe, is the word focus. Christian Cage Rhino enjoying being friends again, enjoying tag teaming together. They have their eyes set on the prize. They plan on walking out of here. The TNA World Tag Team Champions, and right now, Robert Root and Booker T don't care about anything other than beating each other up. Man, are they gonna have to reach down. It's gonna have to be one of those things where a light bulb goes on in the middle of this match, Mike, and Booker T and Robert Root figure out the only way is to work together. No question, opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to being able to get along, to being able to coexist, as we see still the differences between Root and Booker, even to the point that they were disagreeing over who's gonna start this match. Finally, Robert Roode to kick things off in this Deuces Wild quarterfinal, second quarterfinal matchup here tonight against the War Machine. War Machine going right after the headlock. Just use that brute force and he comes off those ropes, Mike, with that shoulder. I really like the, the team of Rhino and Christian. I really do. They, like I said, they just have this renewed vigor about them. I mean, they got their differences set aside. So many years of knowing each other and it's almost like they're they're reborn again as friends, you know what I mean? Take into account both former TNA World right. Heavyweight Champions as well. Incredible resumes for both. Put them together here, and boy, they are definitely one of the favorites in my mind here in the Deuces Wild Tournament tonight. Double team move on Rude. Both take him over with the hip hops, plant him. Christian in off the tag, he's legal, goes for the cover. Referee Hebner down to the two count. As every day goes by, as every week goes by, Rhino and Christian Cage just get better and better as a tag team. I mean, you look at them now and you think they've been together 10, 15 years. That's just how they are. They just really want to add these trophies to their manner. I mean, they do. They feel like they could run with this title and go a long way with it and be talked about in history, like so many of the great tag teams. Nice corkscrew elbow off the ropes there. Yeah, really uncorked that one, unleashed it, and boy, look at Booker outside. We saw that frustration in the first match between James Storm and Sting, and we see it as well here on prettier attempts by Christian on Rude, kind of early in the matchup to go for it. Didn't have Rude worn down sufficiently. Rude able to shove him off into the corner, but Christian goes up to the middle ropes, but Rude's right on him to rake the eyes and then pull the leg out. Wow. Man, what a long drop as you see Christian caught the back of his head. We do know one thing though, Mike. We now know that BG James and Austin Collin by process of elimination will be a tag team later on. Talk about experience and intrigue. That's, that's gonna be a great matchup, but right now Robert Roos looking at Booker T and it's just like he refused to tag in, like he wants to show him what he can do and that can be a good thing and a bad thing. I think they need to start tagging each other quick and get into the flow of the match instead of trying to one-up each other. Rude continues the offensive beatdown on Christian in the corner to the point where he takes the boot, wedges it, positions it right across the throat, right across the windpipe of the Instant Classic, and Cage now fights out of the corner. Series of shots, the knife edge chops. Rude with the shortcut. Gonna try and shoot him off and does. Back first into the corner, and then the corner clothesline is on the money. Well, you've got to be impressed with Robert Rude. I mean, he started out, I mean, with the fight with Booker T at the beginning, and then Rhino and Christian were doing whatever they wanted, but now he's just having his way with Christian Cage. And you wonder though, no, you see a little clapping by Booker a little, T. A little reluctant, but nonetheless. And he's had such a different attitude as of late, Mike. You, you've noticed it. And you have too. We talked about it. Been yes. more crass. Remember what Sting said? Yes. JB asked him about it on Impact. He said, well, that's the way that people react when they've been in the professional wrestling business this long. But so far, Rude in for the entire match and off the spine buster. He goes for the pin. Christian able to get that shoulder rolled to two. Still no tags between Rude and Booker. Well, and the longer that goes, the worse that's going to get because Booker T's going to get frustrated because he's going to want to get in there and be a part of this action. But you can see Booker, he's now starting to show a little more body language. I see him rocking on his heels. I think he knows that, that Robert Roode right now is in control and he's going to want to show him how good he is, how tough he is, but he's still got to get that tag in there to Booker T. 
And at the same time, you see that Christian was trying to use his strength to power Rude across the ring to get a tag into the fresh lineup. Not the case, and there goes Christian into the turnbuckles. Cage able to get both boots up, up on top, and now Rude's right on him again. Trying to do that same thing, take that leg out from underneath him. But wow, there's a DDT, just put it straight on his head. And I mean, stood him straight up on his head. What a shot. But you can see it's taken a lot out of Christian Cage. The instant classic has got to get Rhino in there. Robert Roode had his way with him for quite a while. And you can see Booker T decided I'm tagging myself in. Blind tag from outside. Booker's legal. Boot to the face. Short arm clothesline drops Cage. Yeah, they've got the fresh guy in here. And all of a sudden now, well, oh, you've got to take this team seriously. Booker and Roode. Well, they've got Christian Cage in such a situation where Booker T could finish him right here. And he's, he's relentless. One shot after another. I mean, he just has a... Has a, a little extra razor sharp edge to him, it seems. You could see Christian, though, trying to do anything to fight him off, but man, Booker T wow. on fire. What a back body drop that was. First the float over, and then you're right. Up into the lights was Christian. Man, did he elevate him high that time. Christian tries to fight back now to come back. Cut off immediately by Booker on his way for an axe kick that missed. But you can see Christian Cage still a little slow, but wait a minute. That's how you do it. Grab him by the hair and then cut him. Slam him on the back of his head with a little inverted DDT right there. Exactly. Power him straight down. And now get the tag into the war machine who is locked and loaded. He's ready on the apron. He's ready for battle in this quarterfinal matchup in the Deuces Wild Tournament. Christian Cage is just everything he's got to get Rhino in. And I'm telling you, man, he's just like a freight train, especially when he's rested up like he is. And just taking the air out of Booker T with that shoulder block. Shoulder block in the corner. Going to take Booker now, who puts on the brakes and instead uses a leg lariat to drop the war machine. Measures Rhino, doubles him over with the boot, series of kicks. Man, Booker fired up it from outside. You see what happens? Well, Rubber earlier with the blind tag, and now Rude with the blind tag, and there goes Booker, courtesy of the Rhino clothesline out to the floor. And that was just that communication breakdown that they had, and Rhino took advantage of it. He knew it would be, but nice knee by Robert Rude to stop the train. And look at him here. Going to go for the payoff, suplex attempt, his finishing move, but it's oh. countered, and nice move right there, able to spear him down. One, Cover. two, oh. got it. Get the pin and get the win, and yes, they have done it. War Machine Instant Classic moving on. Great advancement for these guys because let me tell you, Christian Cage was in big trouble in that matchup, but that's one of those where, where Rhino able to hit it just right, right in the shoulder plexus. You know, he didn't have the full running gore, but he was able to get just enough of Robert Roode to get the pin. And now look at him as they're, they're calling Booker T in the middle. And I think it's the show of, of solidarity. And look at the exactly. handshake. You got to so like this. Back. Exactly. The situation where, yes, because of the tournament drawing, because of the way that the pairings went, they had to face each other. But you see everybody here on the same page. Booker raising the hands of Rhino and Christian Cage in that mutual respect that you talked about. Well, I think it's his way of saying, look, he, he knows that him and Robert Roode couldn't advance. They would never be able to work together with the past that they had with Charmel. And, and I think that was him kind of endorsing Rhino and Christian Cage there and letting him know that, hey, he's in their corner. He's rooting for him from here on out. Two of our four quarterfinal matchups have seen Team 3D as well as... Wait a minute, Booker D, look at this! What oh, the hell? He's got the chair in hand, and he just creamed Christian Cage, and then he just creamed the war machine. What? Oh, he turned on him. For what? Unbelievable how he lulled him in to that comfort zone, and he got the chair shots, and you can see he wants to put more. Re remember what you talked about earlier That's in this right. match? This new attitude of Booker T? We, we really saw it, if you recall, a month or so back, the confrontation that he had with Sting. It's just like whatever's going through his mind, he can't work it out ever since that happened.
happened with Charmel? Every decision seemed to be ticking him off. And man, he just wanted to get some payback on somebody tonight. And he just drilled those guys with a couple chair shots. Wow. What is going on right now? Booker T just snapped. What kind of condition are those guys going to be in? That's key. That's really key when you think that they've got potentially two more matches tonight. To the back, JD in the locker room of Scott Steiner. I came out of nowhere. If you can do me a favor and in this time say in English so I can understand you. Kevin, me and you are like two peas in a pond, man. Look at my eyes. You can trust me, man. If we work this out together, we both benefit. Both of us. Joe's been my meal ticket for months. Are you watching the same channel? I'm watching the same channel, same time, same as you. Listen, I know you're using Joe. Everybody knows you're using Joe. For, I know the reason. See, if you help me tonight, I win the world title shot, you get your first title shot against me. That's what you really want. You want to be world champion? Everybody wants to be world champion. All I'm asking, think about it. Just think about it, man. Please, think about it. All right, all right, I'll think about it. Think all about right. It. Come on, Petey. Ten reps. Boy, interesting dynamic there between Kevin Nash and Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. We're ready for the third of our four opening round quarterfinal matchups in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. Already 3D, Christian and Rhino have advanced. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third quarterfinal match in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. Scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one first from Eustis, Florida, Kip James. The megastar Kip James, and if you don't believe it, just ask him. Just read it short. That also, yes, his trucks signify his megastar status. We already know because of the impact draw who his partner is going to be. Well, I don't know. These guys can get along with each other? I no doubt way. it. And his tag team partner from Fairfield, Connecticut, Matt Morgan! As we see Matt Morgan coming down, I want to go back to the Kevin Nash situation that you brought up. I was kind of taking him with a grain of salt when he got out of the limo. But then hearing Scott Steiner propose that situation to him to give him a hand, you know, it makes you wonder if the body language of Kevin Nash has a blade. What's really going on right there is Joe does not need that distraction later on, Mike, with the heavyweight title in play. No, he's got to remain focused on the task at hand, that's for sure. And their opponents are coming into the ring by Hector Guerrero, Homicide, and Hernandez, the American Exchange. I think you have seen it as well as I am. As well as those of you who watch Thursday Night Impact on Spike TV, this renewed figure when it comes to the Latin American exchange. Homicide, Hernandez, and the fact that they went and made a deal with the legendary Hector Guerrero for that incredible Guerrero wrestling family. They talked about how much they respected his brother Eddie through the years. Watch the video tape. Want to be just like him? Now they've got that kind of experience. That kind of knowledge, that kind of backing that they have, they've really gone back to their roots, the Latin American exchange. And by doing that, they didn't just send a message to, to the other tag teams, they sent a message to the world how serious they are about winning those championships that they haven't held in a long, long time. But I gotta talk about something else. For the first time, the chemistry between these, these wild card pairings has been good. Matt Morgan, Kip James, literally, were talking to each other before the match, nodding heads, and smacking each other on the shoulder and back. I think they are going to actually try to work together here, Mike. Well, they'll need to here against the Latin American Exchange. Kip James making fun of Homicide in terms of the height advantage that he has over him. Homicide to poke him in the eye, but then Kip just sets him up, positions him up on that top turnbuckle. And then Homicide explodes with the drop kick. Well, that's one thing you don't want to do is pick off Homicide. This guy, forget about his size. He's got a, 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 just a heart that you can't even imagine. And wow, 
Look at Hernandez, just brings that shoulder right over the top of the rope. Now you talk about strength. You look at Kip James and Big Matt Morgan, and it's, oh, Tope from Hilo! Where'd he come from? Unbelievable! Yeah! Where did he come from? That's what I'm talking about with Homicide. It comes out of nowhere. Just do the rope right on Kip James. That sends a message. Him! We gotta see that again if it's possible. Gonna try and get a replay. Look at that move. Surprise the hell out of us. Homicide coming right down. And wait a minute, we're gonna get back live here. Right in front of the table. Look out! Matt oh. Morgan, he's got Homicide up on his shoulder. How's Homic he gonna plan him? Where's he gonna put him? Homicide just went to the well. Oh, and he just sends him right through the ropes onto the canvas and sets him up. I was gonna talk about that strength on strength of James and Morgan, and they are working together. But how about the strength of Superman? Hernandez is just a freak of nature. He can do everything, and you've gotta keep your eye on him. But unbelievable here, it was all homicide, and then that strength of Matt Morgan is turning around. Oh, look at this show of agility. Wow, incredible. Walking the top rope, Matt Morgan, the big seven-footer, drops off. Big shot to the top of the head, right on the pin, and a two-count on Homicide. Wow, it's interesting to see how, I mean, you mentioned it right off the top. You watched them down closer than I did during the entrances, but what we're seeing here was Matt Morgan essentially setting the table for Kip James. Well, I think they probably watched the first two matches and they're thinking, okay, if we if we have our egos in place like these guys, then we're not gonna stand a chance. There's no way we're gonna make it through three matches. I think they just went and looked at each other and said, okay, we really don't have a history of problems other than the last few weeks. Let's drop that, let's work together. Kids experience the the agility and the strength of Matt Morgan, they could be a pretty, pretty good team, Mike. Kip James hit that top post as he came flying at Homicide. Power man, Big Hernandez, super mix in. Gonna shoot him across and does, and then follows up, just sandwiched him right in the corner. Oh, now you know what he likes to do. He takes that T-shirt, gets it wrapped around the neck. Here's a display of strength. Holy cow, he just sent Kip James flying into the turnbuckle, and then he's got a shot for Matt Morgan. The one thing about it, it did not match the floor. It just got him mad. Look at this, here's the, oh, these two big men squaring off. Matt Morgan, big Hernandez, and Morgan momentarily gets the better of it. Hernandez shot off, mid-ring collision, and nobody just moves at all. He's just, it's just two displays of strength meeting in the middle, but he got just enough momentum that time, and Hernandez sends a message, but he forgets about Kim James, who hits him right from behind. Can't turn your back on Kip James. That's proven right there. And now he catches him with the boot and go charging off. And uh-oh, problems there between Matt Morgan and Kip James. And Hernandez with a drop kick. Well, he took advantage and he's got the pin. Here are your winners, the Latin American Kip James. LAX under the guidance of Hector Guerrero. They move on in this third of four. Final match is the Deuce's Wild Tournament. Yes, LAX 3D, Christian and Rhino. Not sure what condition they're in, but they have all advanced at this point. And we see Matt Morgan having his problems with his partner, Kip James. Let's say to the back, it's JB standing by with the phenomenal AJ Styles. I'm here with the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, set to do battle tonight in one of the most peculiar matchups of your entire career, as you will team with Super Eric to take on the team of BG James and the TNA Knockouts champion, Awesome Kong. Do you have a strategy prepared? <laughs> I mean, how do you prepare for someone like Awesome Kong? I mean, she's a lady, she, you know, I think. I think she, uh, second, I mean, I don't know if I... Are you oh, seeing wait, my wife? What are you Her? doing? Are you seeing my wife? Your neck. Uh, you know what? Last week I told you no. You're no. a liar, AJ. What are you trying to hide? N nothing. What are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm still your boss, and you didn't have the courtesy to check on me when I injured my neck. That's what I'm talking about. Whoa, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? The only thing that seems like you care about is whether or not I'm seeing Karen or not. Are you? Come on. Are you Come seeing on. Karen? Her. Tell me right now. You know what? I'm not going to answer that question. Take care of that neck.
problems between AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. We have already witnessed 3D, LAX, Christian and Rhino advance. Now it is time for the fourth and the final, quarterfinal matchup in the Deuces Wild Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your last quarterfinal match in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. Scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one first, from Metropolis, Super Eric. Yes, one of the strangest situations we've ever seen in TNA. We documented it for you at the top at the outset of this sacrifice broadcast. The superhero, Super Eric, yes, who joined forces with AJ Styles. They knocked off Rocket Raven as a result. They're in the tournament. And his tag team partner from Gainesville, Georgia, he is the Prince of Phenomenal, he I'll tell you, AJ Styles there is going to have to focus on what he needs to do. Kurt Angle there blindsiding him, accusing him of seeing his wife Karen. Of course, AJ tried to lay it to rest. He told him no. But you could see how upset the Kurt Angle was. But one thing about AJ Styles, once he gets in the six-sided ring, everything just focuses on the task at hand. I mean, he wants to get those belts back around his race that will stop at nothing. Pensacola, Florida, B.G. James. Can't argue the experience when it comes to tag team wrestling of an individual like B.G. James, but well, he's had all this experience with all these partners through the years, Kip James for the past decade plus before the breakup, but now he's gonna join forces with of all people, the TNA Knockout Champion, obviously first time they've ever teamed. And his tag team partner accompanied to the ring by Raisha Saeed, resided in Japan. She stands 61 inches tall, weighs 272 and 38 pounds, and is the TNA Women's Knockout Champion, Hosu Kong! I mean, Mike, you can't help but be intrigued by this. Absolutely. You know, when you look at, at AJ Styles and Super Eric, and you look at the size of Awesome Kong, don't for a minute think that she can't inflict the damage that anybody else can. She is almost superhuman when it comes to the knockout wrestling and, and the different girls. She's just a force like no other woman we've ever seen. And if her and BG James can figure this out, hmm, keep your eye on them. Talked about the obvious fact that they've never teamed before. What do you think about communication when it comes to BG and Awesome Kong? Maybe Raisha Saeed got in between and was able to work out something between these two. Well, I think what BG James has got to do is figure out a way to feed Awesome Kong so that you can use her strength. Let her get a hold of these guys and, and set up for that awesome bomb that she does with that spinning back fist. Doesn't matter how big you are, she connects with those. She's going to take you down, but Super Eric, Beautiful drop kick right there. Beautiful. Yeah, certainly was. Great leg extension. Follow cover off the lateral press, but BG able to roll the shoulders. You think back, we talked about it earlier. AJ Styles, Tomko was a tag team. Then it boiled down to Tomko suffering the injury over in the Orient. AJ looking for a partner to recall on impact on. He went all over the TNA locker room before finally hooking up, making that connection with Super Eric. And Turn about fair play, I guess, right there is AJ trying to match his superhero buddy and tag team partner in his BG. Look at the corner, Kong tagged in. I gotta like this, so get her in there early. Let's find out if she can mix it up. And you know AJ Styles, he's conflicted with this. You can just Who see in be? his eyes. He, he's a little, you gotta be a little intimidated by her, but yet you also, you, you, you think that, that you're not supposed to be in the ring with her. But look at him, AJ just grabs a hold of her, they lock up and he just, Pushes her in the corner. I think that's what you got to do. You got to show her what the world is. Just pushing her hair away. And, <laughs> it was rearranging her dress, actually. Yeah. Quick go One, behind by two. Styles, almost able to get the three count right there on Kong. Well, you got to like that. He's Whoa. not letting up in any way, shape, or form, and he's almost had the pin twice. Oh! 
She just spun around though and just leveled him. And look at her. Not intimidated. She gets right back on her. Oh, there it is. Yes. Spinning back fist. But look at this. AJ well, kind of stays on his feet. Oh, able to use that top rope. Able to hook it with his arm so he didn't go down. And then Styles comes back with a boot and drops Kong. Boy, she startled him there though. She stunned him. And you know what? He had to look at this. She's reached out and got a handful. And AJ Styles is just gotta be screaming in pain. Holy cow, if he can make any noise. Kong with the crotch claw on Styles, and then appropriately enough, the inverted atomic drop by BG. Well, you gotta take, go after the injured body part, and that's what BG James was doing right there. Making sure that what, what there was any feeling left, he was gonna take it out. Nice shot there by BG James, and you know what? That's all it takes in a match like this, is just one good break. We've already seen it happen. You get the pin and you advance. It's survival at this point. BG neutralizing AJ Styles in the middle of the ring, not allowing him, enabling him to get to the far side and tag in Super Eric. Now AJ can try and mount an offense, but he's caught right there with that big boot by James. Well, he just doesn't have bearings and real close to a pin there by BG. And look at this. BG grabs AJ, pulls him into the corner, and breaks Kong in. And that keeps AJ from using that speed to get away. And look at her. She's going to take him up. Oh, but AJ Styles so agile. Oh, she just sat right on top. Two. Almost got the pin. She was going to go for that awesome bomb, no question, and said, off the sit down splash. Quick tag in. BG for the cover. No, two only. AJ powers out. AJ Styles doing everything he could to avoid that awesome bomb. Ended up, got himself in a precarious position. And, you know, you always wonder what would happen when you put your whole weight on him and had, had to knock the air out of him. And look at BG going there around the neck, pulling back on the chin, doing whatever he can to, to keep AJ Styles in that ring so he can't make a tag. Oh, BG caught him with that one good, right on the point, and then there's the Pele. Wow! Never thought he had it in him at this point, and that was... Again, he does it when you least expect it, and that's why it's always successful, because he catches that boot right in your face. And now I'm telling you, he sent BG James down, but AJ's got to figure out where Super Eric is. Now he sees him. Yeah, maybe the most unpredictable move in TNA, the Pele kick. Super Eric gets the tag. A big shot, takes down BG. Look at the clothesline, just leveled it, dropped it. Sends him face first now, right into the corner. BG able to reverse, shoot Super Eric off, and oh, Super Eric going to try and go all the way across the apron. Now, set up on top, here comes high risk move. There he goes, oh man! Overshot a little bit, but has he got enough? No! Awesome Kong able to get there just in time. Think about this, and he'd hit that dead on. Now look at this! Awesome Kong trying to slam him out. Super Eric just what? scoops her up and slams her on BG. The superhero with that super slam on Kong, dropping down right onto her partner BG. There's the dive! Not letting up on her at all. And here goes AJ. Oh, he caught the rope. And that's what can happen. And he landed right on his face. That just shows you what happens when you go high risk. AJ Styles caught. Look at that. And then he caught his nose, too. And BG has the advantage. Yep, zero reward that time with the high risk move as AJ goes springboard. Instead, quick small package here. Caught BG unaware and got the pin. Wow. Here are your winners, the Prince of Phenomenal AJ Styles and Super Eric. Nice recovery, though, for AJ Styles, able to take advantage of the weakened BG James. Might have missed that springboard move. Comes right back at him and gets the pin and gets the win, and they move on in the tournament. Well, it's just instinct, Mike. Big win, awesome Kong BG defeated. And we are going to take a look at the Deuces Wild Bracket at this point. As you can see, looking at the bracket, we have four teams that have advanced to the semifinals of this tournament. 3D, Rhino and Christian Cage, LAX to take on, yes, AJ Styles and Super Eric, because, ladies and gentlemen, later tonight we will have new TNA World Tag Team Champions crowned at our Sacrifice Pay-Per-View event.
It's Mike today, Don West back at ringside, and DW Sacrifice really shaping up to be an incredible event. Already got that first round of that Deuces Wild tournament out of the way. Want to remind you what's still to come here tonight at our Sacrifice pay-per-view. First time ever. It's going to be the knockouts in action in that makeover battle royal slash ladder match. Yes, somebody's getting a title shot at Awesome Kong. At the same time, the loser will end up having her head shaved. But Mike, as they're setting it up right here in front of us, it is the debut of the Terror Dome. The X Division will be inside what people have called Six Sides of Steel meets Elevation X. It is the most unbelievable structure that you've seen, and the one who can get himself out of it, Mike, will become the number one contender. Of course, in addition to that, it will be Samoa Joe, Big Papa Pump, the genetic freak Scott Steiner for the TNA World Heavyweight title. And Don, I have just been handed a note here. I'm told that Jim Cornette, representing TNA management, he's going to make an announcement later tonight concerning that main event matchup, that TNA title bout with Samoa Joe and Scott Steiner. We'll stay on top of that story. Now let's send it to the back. I understand that Lauren is positioned back there with Scott Steiner's brother, the dog-faced gremlin, Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner, I gotta say, you surprised us all tonight by showing up here with your brother, Scott. Okay, my next question, why? Why? Well, this is probably one of the biggest nights in my brother's, you know, TNA career, and he, he's here for the championship, and he asked me to show him my support, and so I'm here to show my support for my brother. Okay, now, <laughs> I gotta be honest. Every time you and your brother get together, you seem to stir up a little bit of trouble. Now, what is your definition of support? Trouble? I'm here. My brother called me. He wants me to support him in this wrestling match, and that's all. I mean, come to Orlando, get some sun, and, and show my support for my brother. I mean, that's it. So, I mean, any more questions? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Well, there's one thing I have to say. <laughs> okay, let's take a closer look at the Terror Dome. TNA Wrestling has brought you the most innovative matches in professional wrestling today. From the Ultimate X, to the Six Sides of Steel, to the Elevation X, TNA is ready to rock the six-sided ring once again. The Terror Dome combines the cruel intentions of the cage and the athleticism of the Ultimate X to make it the most challenging match in TNA history. It stands an ominous 30 feet above the arena floor. The Terror Dome, a fabrication that has the brute strength to contain a great white shark. The winner must climb 30 feet above the ground and escape from the tiny hole above. The high-flying stars of the X Division take no limits to another level as they are enclosed inside TNA's newest and most challenging concept match. Only one will escape the Terror Dome. The very best of the X Division prepare to fight for their lives. Who will survive? The Terror Dome is next. He he tastes great, Kareeman! Konnichiwa! Stars of the X Division on display. You heard it in the video package, certainly the most challenging matchup that we've ever had here in Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. And to me, when you're talking about the terror though, the danger factor, it really can't be measured, can it, Don? No, it's, it's unlike anything you've ever seen, and I had a chance to talk with the guys, as the guys were each given about 10 minutes to get inside the Terror Dome by themselves to kind of adapt to what they were going to be dealing with. Mike, you cannot believe their thoughts coming out of this. Ladies and gentlemen, the second participant in this Terror Dome match, where the man who escapes the exit at the top of the dome is the winner and the number one contender for the X Division Championship. He is from Bombay, India, the guru, Sanjay Dutt. Yes, that is the object of Terror Dome. Try and fight off your opponents and somehow make your way to the top of the cage. The dome part will be lowered into position 
and the winner of this matchup will go on to gain a shot at the X Division Championship. From Marietta, Georgia, comes to Quincy's Queen! We see the entrance of Consequences Free, Don. I know that you want to talk a little bit more about these wrestlers who had the chance, the x Division stars, to try and acclimate themselves to this Terradome earlier. Every one of them said that you cannot believe how high up you are to make it up through that hole that's at the top. I mean, it's 30 feet above the floor, about 25 feet above the, above the mat. Uh oh, 26 or so, it's just so intimidating, Mike. But they said you have no idea the muscles you have to use and the things you've got to do to actually crawl through that Give thing. Me a shield, yeah. The next participant from the Deep Blue Sea, Shark Boy! We are about to see 10 X Division stars fight inside this tail zone with the object being to climb your way to the top after you fight off your nine opponents and escape through that hole in the top of the tail zone cage. To the victor goes a shot at the reigning X Division champ, Petey Williams. Representing the rock and rave infection for Atlanta, Georgia, Jimmy Reed. Mike, if you'll notice, and I found this out after they went inside there, every one of these guys now have a set of gloves on. The steel is so sharp and it's so, you know, squared that they have to have the gloves just to protect their hands. From Anaheim, California, You can see Kaz as well wearing the gloves down. The word that I kept hearing them talk about, obviously the danger involved, but just how unforgiving, Don, that this Terradone cage really is. Boy, you talk about having to fight off not only nine opponents, but also to have to fight this steel structure. It's incredible. Well, if you get to the top, two and four, it's a long way down. Ladies and gentlemen, the next participants from Detroit, Michigan, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns. Talk about a huge edge, inherent advantage has to go to the guns. Alex Shelley on your left, Chris Saban on your right, putting out the location of the Motor City on their, yep, map of Michigan right there, using it on their hands. Motor City Machine Guns. They've at least got the numbers game working in their way, in their well, back, yep. If there's a way to work together, they're going to have to figure it out because, like you said, it can be a great advantage, if anything, just having a hand there for support. From Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Johnny Devine. Eight down, two to go. Here comes the X Division trader, Johnny Devine, the man who has been alive with Glenn Ray and Brother Devon. I can say this, Team 3D, they've already moved on, taking a step closer to the TNA World Tag Team titles that we will have later tonight in the Deuce's Wild Tournament. Here's a chance for Johnny Devine, the running mate of Team 3D, to move right into the X Division title picture, as you see him setting up the paparazzi cam at ringside to document everything that goes down in this one-of-a-kind, first time ever. Terror don't match up here at Sacrifice. And the final participant from Elizabeth, New Jersey, Black Machismo, Jane Lethal! Boy, who wants another shot at the X Division Championship more than this man? Black Machismo, Jane Lethal, really almost Dominant when you think about it in terms of holding the gold on for 2008. I gotta tell you folks, what you gotta understand is once all 10 of these guys get inside, they're locked in. There's only one way you get out, and that's through the top. When you do that, of course, 
You're declared the number one contender, and then they'll open it up and let the others out. But this isn't a situation where you can find a way of getting out of this thing. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jim gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. I know this is going to be a great match. I'm anticipating it highly, but I want to sweeten the pot a little bit. You see, we got a spot open in tonight's main event because of the injury to Kurt Angle. So, in this match, not only does the winner get a shot at the X Division title, but the winner of this match will take Kurt Angle's place tonight Whoa. for the World Heavyweight Championship. Wow, if that so doesn't gentlemen, give you. I expect you to fight like a pack of wild dogs. Man, if that doesn't give you extra incentive, Mike, I don't know what does. Not just an X Division title shot, you can literally be the world champion tonight as we see the top being lowered. And I'm telling you, folks, look at this steel structure, Mike. I asked one of them to describe it to me. He said it's almost like a steel loony bin. That's what he feels like. I tell you, the stakes just got raised to a level that we never expected. As the dome drops into position, you're right, it's almost like this is a steel asylum. I like that, a steel asylum. And there you hear it, the opening bell. You're a part of wrestling history. First ever tear dome match, not only an X Division title shot, but also amazingly enough to take the spot, take the place of Kurt Angle tonight, as it will be a three-way match for the TNA World's title. Which one of these exhibition competitors is going to advance to be in there with Scott Steiner and Samoa Joe? We're going to do our best to call this for you. You see Curry Man walking up the back of Jimmy Ray, then the jawbreaker for Ray by Curry Man. Well, actually, referee Rudy Charles is actually clipped up to the top of the him. cage. So in case there's two guys trying to get out at the same time, he can determine who that is and who the winner is. I don't know what your strategy is in a situation like this. Do you just try to wait it out and then find an opening and kind of quietly sneak up? Do you try to get higher than everybody else? I don't know, but it's gonna be a matter of, I think they're gonna try to beat each other down to where there's only one left to go up there and climb through. There you see it, Don mentioned it just seconds ago. That's our senior official, referee Rudy Charles, and you can see that he is securely harnessed into place up there in case of a photo finish, as Don says, as you're trying to skate out through that top, through that opening. He's gonna be right there. Oh my, what a move by Kaz. He dropped the vine right on his head. One thing about this, it's there is absolutely zero, zero give in that steel structure. None at all. And where the where the hole is at the top, it's like three feet higher than where Elevation X was. I mean, think about it. You really are going to be an extreme athlete if you come through and look at that move. That's the teamwork we're talking about with the Motor City Machine Guns. They're going to try to work together to eliminate people. Boy, that's exactly what they're wow. doing right there for Shark Weapon. Oh, wow, man, the, the guru, guru Sanjay Dutt. I got dizzy watching that many exactly. revolutions. Multiple revolutions over for Saban. But now Saban's partner in the gun, Shelly, went for a tombstone, but instead of title driving him down, he face planted him, and now Black Machismo is going to go for that lethal combination when he got cut off by Saban. Wow, the guns working together so well, able to stop that lethal combination from happening. And now you can see how he sets him up. Oh, man, the double team move on Black Machismo, and now he's out. Boy, take a look at Wait a consequences. Is Creed. Creed. Just gonna point that out to everybody. We see that, that Creed now hanging as Kaz tries to bring him down. Look out, this is where the danger factor just can't be measured. Look out, oh, guys. Oh no, this is way too high. Oh, he kind of used it, used the, the leg drop. But now consequences, Creed realizes he didn't have a good grip and he's trying to come down and get another big, wow! He decides to take Kaz out in one shot and then go back up. Kaz used Creed for an assist for that big move, but then Creed able to turn it around on Kaz. Big right hand, oh man, did Creed just take out Jimmy Ray, but then Curryman explodes out of nowhere with a clothesline. Here come the guns for the double team on Curryman. Well, I'll tell you something, it, it, the guys were saying that it takes such a strength to hold yourself up there. And then, when you think about how you've got to crawl to the middle, it's not just getting up to the top. I mean, that, these guys can do that. It's once you get to the top, making your way to the center and realizing where gravity takes effect. And I mean, it really takes effect in this matchup. It's unbelievable.
escape this tear at all. Not only get an X Division title shot, but be a part of the three-way TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup later tonight. Yes, it's now going to be the winner of this match taking on Scott Steiner. Yes, and Samoa Joe for the TNA goal. Well, you see Cavs got himself up there, but now everybody's climbing. I see Jimmy Rave, I see Johnny Devise. Oh, wait a minute, look at this, Johnny, De Johnny Devine using it. You're kidding me. Oh, no, he's, oh, you gotta what? be kidding me. Holy cow. Tower of Doom move in the corner that was punctuated by Johnny Devine with an incredible hurricane run. Guys in the truck, please. I tell you what, if there's any way that you can keep that replay, please do so. I understand that we're not gonna be able to get cut away from this live action. I want to miss anything. I want to see that one again. Unreal, but boy, that got the crowd realizing the danger involved in that high. And, wow, Curry Man thought he was gonna put him on his face, but Sanjay Dutch showing that speed, that athletic ability that he's known for. And now Black Batismo sees an opportunity, and that's what you gotta do. You gotta commit yourself, though. Once you go up there, you've gotta commit yourself. Jimmy Ray realizes it and doesn't want to let him get an advantage and just put his head right in that. that Steel Asylum. Boy, oh, you're right. This matchup, Don, it's about survival. He just rocked the world right there. Unbelievable. Just rocked the world right on Black Machismo. And now you can see the Guru. It's got him an advantage. And I think he would have a great advantage in a match like this. He's just so quick. But they're so unsure of themselves. They got to make sure they got a grip with their hands. And they got to make sure they take the right step in there. Curry Man goes in and grabs the leg. Not like there's a track record. A match that yeah. you've seen before where you can watch this escape aspect and, and formulate some kind of a game plan or strategy. I think you've got to obviously survive the best you can, but you always have to be watching the top of that cage in an effort to maybe cut somebody off to limit them from climbing up and, and gaining that, that distance on the other competitors here. Because that's really what's going to separate the winner. Getting the distance and then climbing up and escaping through that opening in the top of the cage. And once you get off there, you got to hold on for dear life because if you fall, you're going to risk serious injury from that height. And, and the guru, Sanjay Dutt, he's committed. He's got his hands on the ceiling of the structure, but with Curry Man right up there with him, he just can't make a risk and take the move as everybody's trying to eliminate each other down low. But keep your eyes on Sanjay Dutt and Curry Man up here at the top. Of there's a chummer right there for Shark Boy. And I, I believe that was Alex Shelley that he just nailed from the guns. And we see Sharky gonna try and take advantage of an opening, but Saban is there from the guns to cut him off. Well, what you gotta do is just get everybody else involved with somebody else, and, and maybe you can sneak up on another side. You could see Shark Boy fighting for Saban with everything that he's got, but again, you look up top and you can see him there. The guru just holding on, doesn't want to let go. And Alex Shelley and Curry Man. Stayed right there underneath him. Well, you see that one? Super chubber that time by Shark Boy as he took out Saban. Now to try and get Cav, but no, Cav shoots him off. This is with the clothesline, and Sharky goes for it again, but oh, Cav just waved him. Wave of the future. Put him right on his face, and you can see everybody looking up. Black Machismo is the. As, oh, man, they finally were able to get the guru unloosed, and he was able to throw him right into the crowd in the middle. He was holding on for everything, but he just couldn't do it any longer. Curry Man just overpowered him at that point. You're right, Sanjay was up there for what seemed like an eternity, trying to hold on, but Curry Man wouldn't let him advance up the top of the dome. Ray rocks Curry Man with the right. Curry answers back, and what an exchange this is. Curry getting the better of it. Well, you see so many bodies laying on the mat. This is a great opportunity for somebody. Wow. Jimmy Ray, you talk about a clothesline. He came off of that rope with such speed, and he sees it. He senses it. Look at this. Jimmy Ray making his way up there. Can he get up to the ceiling in time? But Curry Man knows it, and Curry Man gets there to stop him. Second key that we talked about, obviously surviving, but not allowing any of the other competitors. You go to the spice rack here. You, spice can't, you can't let him get that distance. Curry Man cuts off Ray. Look out. Oh, man! The top rope with the spike rack and Jimmy Ray. Oh, Lee, you know what? I tell you what, add that to the highlight reel in the truck, guys. Thank you. Keith Mitchell, check mark next to that one. Curry Man, big shot to the back right there. Put down lethal. Curry Man, this could be.
might be the opening he's looking for. Curry Man trying to escape the cage. Now you've got Alex Jelly over there too as, as Chaos going up there to fight him off. Black with cheese and the crowd loving every bit of this. And they realize they're seeing something they've never seen before. Kaz just got knocked out. Curry Man has an advantage as he's trying to get up. You've got to get up high enough. But look at the speed of Kaz as he goes right up after him. Again, keep in mind the winner of this match to advance in the three way. Oh. Did you see that? Like it's a reverse flux capacitor. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Now that I look at it again, the reverse flux capacitor by Kaz on Curry Man. Well, that'll stop some of the pursuit. Look at Kaz looking up, realizing he's got an opportunity here. Can he claim it? What you've got to do is you've got to get to that ceiling and get your legs up there before anybody can get to you. But look at Johnny oh, no. Devine, he goes right after him. Yeah, Devine right there. But that's what you've got to do. You can't allow anybody to get that distance. And Devine meets Kaz up on the top. They exchange and, oh my. Oh, the knees into the gut. Wow. Take the air right out of you. Who's going to take advantage of it? Black Machismo, I see over here on the side, trying to get up. As you see consequences creating Johnny Devine and uh-oh. Divine intervention. Oh man. Oh, that double underhook move is seriously sick. Takes Creed up, drops him down on his head, and now I think Divine's what? He's smart. He's smart making move. his way, but there's nobody on this side of the cage now. Look at Divine go up the dome. You got three people on one side. Johnny Divine, oh my gosh, he's found himself up to the ceiling. Now Kaz realizes it, and he's got to get up there quick. And look at this. Kaz okay. has got a hold of him. No. No! Look out! Oh. Man, I'll tell you what, he took everybody out with him. Kaz now has the opportunity. This Look is at it. Kaz! This could he's be so it. close! He's climbing his way up! Can he make it? Oh, he's got to use his legs! Everybody's trying to catch him, Mike! Here they come! They're trying to take him down! But Kaz able to swing his legs out! Now he's got to use all of his upper body strength to lift himself up! What do you say, Rudy? I think he's got it! Here's your winner! today how he was able to use that body strength he had the opportunity when he dropped the bar down he was up there alone and machismo and shelly in the game could not catch him in time what an incredible feat by Kaz! and think of this not only a shot at the x division title but Kaz right. now gets yes an opportunity to be in the three-way for the tna world title tonight I'll tell you something, you've got to take notice. How impressive was that? Tonight, he also later on gets a chance to walk out with World Championship Gold. Unbelievable, the athletic agility that it took. I'll tell you something, Mike, we'd heard about it, we'd seen diagrams of it, but to see it here in person, we've got to show you guys some replays. Just this, what an unbelievable event. Yeah, we're gonna relive the incredible highlights of the first ever Terror Dome match. There it is, that was Johnny Devine, very impressive with that Hura Kanrana. The Rock the World move by Jimmy Rave. Wow, the super, super, super chummer from Shark Boy as well. And oh, Curry man. man, look at that, Mike. This funny, and that, unbelievable, the spice rack that he landed Jimmy Rave on his head and that, that what was it? The, Reverse flux, flux capacitor. capacitor. Exactly. Divine took out many of the competitors, enabling Kaz to make his way up. He gained that opening, he gained that space, and there you see it, the replay. Kaz victorious and motioning. He wants a shot, yes, he wants the championship gold, and he has a chance for both X Division gold and later tonight, the TNA World Heavyweight title as well. Unbelievable effort by Kaz, and you mentioned it. Not only will we have the semifinals of the Deuces Wild Tournament, not only are we gonna have somebody get shaved in the middle of that ring tonight, the very first Terra Dome delivered, and everybody's on their feet, pointing at Kaz, giving him the TNA champ that he deserves, because I'll tell you something, there's nothing like seeing it for the first time, Mike. What a spectacle Terra Dome was. Kaz victorious. We're going to send it to JB with the TNA Heavyweight Champ, Samoa Joe. I'm here with the TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Samoa Joe. Joe, certainly now with Kaz in the World Heavyweight title pitcher, replacing Kurt Angle. Your thoughts? You know, uh, Kaz is a tremendous competitor, and he deserves a spot. 
But business is business, JB, and at the end of the night, I will retain my championship. Now, Joe, I don't really want to stir things up here, but everybody's talking about Kevin Nash. You don't stir things up. No, I don't want to stir things up. You don't want to stir things up. That's all you do, JB. That's all you do is stir things up. So what, you want to know my answer? Do I know why Kevin Tate was Steiner? No. Do I know where he's at right now? No. Have I seen him today? No. And do I care, JB? No. I don't care about Scott. I don't care about Rick. And Kev, I sure as hell don't care about you. Bring the world, bring an army. Because you're never an underdog when you got the world at your back. And I'll tell you what, boys, Kev, if I see you tonight, if you dare to cross my path, I guarantee you one thing, I will make you regret it. Wow, tensions running high. Tanae and West back at the broadcast table tonight at Sacrifice. Terror Dome being, yes, taken down. But Don, think of this. Still to come tonight, that knockout, makeover, battle royal, and ladder match all in one. New TNA World Tag Team Champions crown. But we have to talk about what now is a three-way match for the TNA Championship. It's Samoa Joe, Scott Steiner, Kaz now, the third man. But give me your thoughts on the Kevin Nash factor. Well, the one thing it's doing right now is it's causing Joe to lose his focus. I mean, he's always felt that Kevin Nash was in his corner, and now he's hearing all these things. He's hearing that, oh, he was seen with Scott Steiner, or he was talking with Scott Steiner, and right now Joe doesn't need that kind of a distraction, especially with Scott Steiner and now Kaz being in that matchup, Mike. I mean, that is the key. Concentration level for the reigning TNA World Heavyweight Champ Samoa Joe has to be at an all-time high especially now when you factor in that he's got the unpredictable because, yes, Kaz is now going to be in that three-way match with Joe and Big Papa Pump. And ladies and gentlemen, up next here at Sacrifice, the continuation of the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. Are you ready for the first of two semi-final matchups? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first semi-final match in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. It is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team 3T. We open sacrifice as well as the Deuces Wild Tournament with a victorious Team 3D as they eliminated, as they took out that wild card team of the Tennessee Cowboys, James Storm and Sting. But now we've really got a question. The condition of Team 3D's opponents. We'll find out. And their opponents first. He is the War Machine, Bruno! Well, Mike, look right there. Normally, Rhino charges to that ring. You can see him holding the back of his head and just kind of sauntering down. I think you asked an important question there. How seriously hurt are they? And Team 3 d will take advantage of that in a minute. Oh, you can see that Rhino still suffering from the after effects of that absolutely shocking, out of nowhere attack by Booker T with the steel chair earlier tonight. And his tag team partner is the instant classic, Christian Cage! Look at Christian Cage, same thing. Both of them, it's not just the, the shot that they took from the chair, it's the fact that it was so unexpected. The, the, the shock of it coming from Booker T. They've got to figure out some way to unscramble those brains, Mike, because they got to work together. They're going to have to do quick tags. They're going to have to stay in as little as they can to take advantage of Team 3D and try to wear them out and where you get it to an even playing field because right now, Team 3D knows they have a big advantage. We knew that there were going to be plenty of surprises tonight at Sacrifice. Never had a thought, though, that we would see Booker T unleash that steel chair on Rhino and Christian Cage, and that has to be a major factor heading into this matchup. Semi-final, first of two, Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament, 3D to face the instant classic in the war machine. We heard Brother Ray earlier, one down, two to go, and you know they take such pride in wearing those belts. They take such pride and being able to 
to tell everybody how many times they've wore Tag Team Gold and how many factions they've done it. Wow, Brother Devon just caught Christy Cage right in the back of the head. Cheap shot, you expect it from Team 3D, but right now with the condition of Christian, he didn't need that, and look at Brother Ray working right on it. Would you expect anything less from 3D? No. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, pretty obvious here. I, I would anticipate what their strategy is going to be. Just seeing it in the opening seconds of this matchup, they are going to be totally focused on the neck, on the heads of their opponents, Rhino and Christian, after that steel chair attack by Booker. Talk about a bullseye. Oh, that he does right on the back of that head, and man alive, brother Ray! Oh man, the every neck breaker, shot. Of course, you could just see the hands go to the head by Christian Cage, and if Rhino's in that same condition that Christian Cage is, this could be quick for Team 3D. They're going to have to find a way to steal one here if Rhino and Christian Cage are going to advance. Great move there by Brother Ray, hooking the leg of Christian, getting the tag in to Brother Devon, rake of the eyes and. Watch Devon right here, sure enough. Elbow shot, boy, this is tough to watch, isn't it? It is. Shot to the back of the head. Again, totally focused on the head and neck of Christian Cage. I just don't understand what Booker T was doing. I mean, I thought he was giving him their, their, his vote of support. Exactly. And, and letting him know he was in their corner and all he's done is just taken this promising tag team and has just turned it so around and now Team 3D able to just Hurt Christian Cage every chance they get. Christian Cage has got to get out of there, Mike. He's Boy, got to get Rhino in. How about that move, that head scissors from outside by Brother Ray. Boy, Christian digging down deep. Talk about guts and courage here, trying to fight through the pain. After those series of chops, he gets the tag in, and now let's watch the War Machine. Yeah, and Christian with the double team. That's what you got to do. You can't have any ego. You've got to depend on your partner to help you out. And then when he gets tired and hurt too much, he, he's got to get you back in because they are they are wounded right here. And you can see him, but man, the War Machine, he just has one speed, and it's straight ahead. Rhino leaves his feet, puts the shoulder right into Devon. Takes him down. Gonna head to the corner. We're gonna try and measure him oh. here for the floor, but he's caught from behind. You see that he hooked his hair. Grabbed him by the back of the head, by the hair. And what did he do? Just top powered him, brother Ray. Powered him right back down, head first. And boy, you can see that wasn't a good landing for Rhino. No, it wasn't. It, all it does is just sends that concussion reeling and brother Devon just putting the, the boots into the neck and applying the pressure to the back of the head to the mat. Just just any, once that brain, once it just starts pounding like that, there's just nothing you can do, and they know it. Again, the continued attack on the head, point of the elbow, forearm shot is the follow-up move. Big clubbing blows as well from Brother Ray. They're just relentless, Team 3D. I mean, it's it's hard to watch. You mentioned it earlier. You just you feel sorry for them because they're just such competitors. They're going to have to fight hard. They're going to have to find a way to dig down. But right now, Team 3D just having their way, doing what they want, when they want. Totally in control of this matchup. Semi-final in the deuce is wild. However, how about that move right there? Great spine buster. Desperation, man. Desperation, but you've got to at this yes. point. You have to, and like he's doing, you hit it, now get the tag in. And Christian Cage has got to go in there, hit fast, and then try to get Rhino back in. I really do. I think you've got to keep Team 3D off balance. Right, a loss eliminates you. You've got to do everything. Dig down deep here. Get that adrenaline flowing if you can. Well, it's easy for us to say, isn't it, after these guys were hit oh, with look this, at this guy. He's fearless. Look at this. Fearless. Wow. I'll tell you what. That's a crossbody block all the way up from the lights. That's what Christy Cage is made of. I mean, he's head reeling. He's probably dizzy. He doesn't even know where he is. But then he oh, was yeah. able to hit that. Check oh, this out. Ray, let's look at this look again. At replay. Look what at a this. shot. Wow. Able to take down both Brother Ray and Brother Devon with that cross body from the top. Now, Christian Cage, that's what you need, the confidence booster, to show that you can dig through and bear through the pain, which is what he's got to do. And look at that. Oh, man, Brother Ray, right place, right time. And oh, no. Look oh, out. no. Look oh, out. right into the steel steps. Hooked him from outside, oh. then sent him flying. And you saw that it was the legs, it was the knees that time. No! That, that hit the steps, but at the same time, think of this, Don. When you go flying over, the landing that you have on the floor is on the back of your head. Look at oh, this! Good guy! He just crushed him in the steel steps again! Oh my God, somebody stop this! 
Oh, he was so valiant in the comeback, and now they won't let Rhino in, and he just feeds it right to Brother Devon. And Slick Johnson, the referee, had no idea what was going on outside. Giving a roll, Christian in, goes to the cover. Slick down for a two count only. Boy, amazingly, still life left in Christian. I didn't think there was. Well, there's, there can't be much left after that shot that he took right into the steel steps. Rhino dying to get in right now. He knows how bad his friend, his partner's hurt. Christian Cage to desperation punches and then Brother Devon right back to the head. Oh, oh look at that. Neck vice applied by Devon. Oh, using all that power and strength here, twisting the previously injured neck of Christian Cage. And boy, it is just imminent. It's imperative here that he's got to get that tag in to the war machine. And by any means necessary, even biting the fingers of Devon, shot from outside, however, by Brother Ray to the head of Christian. Well, every chance, every advantage they're going to take. But Christian again just reaches down and just starts throwing punches. But oh no. Oh man, and he. You see him twisting so he wouldn't land on his head? He did it out of, out of survival mode, and he ended up landing on his side. I mean, it really was a wicked fall, Mike. Boy, just difficult to watch this. Total domination by 3D, taking advantage of the injured. Christian and Rhino. Christian with the shot. That might be the one that turns the tide. Well, Rhino was able to Boy. distract Brother Ray just enough for Christian to do this, and look at him, and he hits the Hurricane Rana on Brother Ray, and here he goes, one, two, oh man, he got the shoulder up in time, you were just hoping they could steal it right there. Boy, just amazed that he was able to clear the cobweb so that he could go up and hit that top rope Hurricane Rana, then goes for the cover, not only the two count, but now you've got to get your partner in, Christian. Man, you can see Rhino just beating on that turnbuckle, he wants it, in. he knows that they're close. He knows they've got Brother Ray Weekend. If he can get in there and finish him off, he's got the hand shaking, and Christian just can't get to his feet. He's just, his brains are scrambled, but he's made the tag. At the same time, Brother Ray tags in Brother Diva. Big clothesline by Rhino. That elbow, that baby was on target, and there goes Devon to the corner. Rhino right in after him, shoulder block, brings him out, belly to belly. That's what you've got to do, you just got to fight through the pain, and wow, just at the last second, Brother Race throws the big fist to the back to break it up, and then a shot for Christian to knock him to the floor. Yeah, Christian momentarily had his head turned away, and he even got another shot to the back of the head. What a concussive slam that time. Here comes the what's up one more time. Boy's way out there. Watch out for Christian outside, Brother Devon. It's tossed off by Christian Cage. He just got there too quickly for Brother Devon to hit it. Now, look at that spine buster. That spine buster on about 370 pounds of Brother Ray, and this is their opportunity, Mike. Rhino and Christian Cage realize it. They've been able to hang, to hang in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. One, who, who just two. Oh, man, Brother Ray broke it up in time. I just saw Johnny Devine. He was just in camera position. You can see oh. him right there. He just snuck down the ramp once he got in his hand. Looks like a kendo stick. Yeah, it is. He's got a kendo stick, but nobody sees him on the other side. Oh, Rhino, they... Rhino gets tossed out to the floor. Unprettier attempt by Christian here on Devon, but no Ray in to break it up again. Another shot to the back of the head. Oh, they've got him up, and there's the double team move right on the back of his head. But Rhino finds his way back into the ring. Whoa, double clothesline. Keep your eye, though, on Johnny Devine. Well, at all times, Rhino able to get that team turned around, at least momentarily. Wait a minute, Johnny Devine just handed the kendo stick That's what he did. off to Brother Ray while Devon and Rhino are fighting out in the middle of the ring. A little insurance policy outside for 3D. Brother Devon gets caught with a Rhino boot and then a big slam down. One, Rhino on top. two, go! Was that close? Which team will advance in the Deuces Wild Tag Tournament? It's Devine around the ringside, gore. but remember, he handed the kendo stick to Brother gore. Ray. There it goes. Gore. Here it is. Gore! Cover. It's got it! Wait a minute, what on earth? What? Oh, Johnny Devine's distracted the referee. Wait a minute. Look He's out. got the kendo stick. Oh, he just cracked him on the head. Oh, that head that took the chair shot earlier. Oh, man, that's just wrong, wrong, wrong. See Brother Devon just draping the arm across the chest of an unconscious war machine rhino. 
Yes, Team 3D. You're, the, you're jumping the gun here, Brother Ray. You got Ray Core picking up the championship belt. No, no, no. You've got another Lord match Moore, to come. Buddy. Remember, it's three, three matches tonight before you become TNA World Tag Team Champions. You gotta have three victories. And think about it, though, how valued an effort it was for Christian Cage and Rhino. And they, it took cheating with Johnny Devine coming in with a kendo stick. Referee Slick Johnson got distracted. I can't believe it. Team 3D advanced. And, and Duck, would you have ever thought looking back that Booker T would play such an important role in enabling 3D for the win? To the back, JB with Kevin Nash. Here he is, Kevin Nash, the man with all the answers, the man that everybody's talking about around here. Well, I have a few questions for you, Kevin Nash. In fact, Samoa Joe not too pleased when I told him that you arrived tonight at the building with Scott Steiner. What were we dating? Was it Sadie Hawkins? What, I, I got a ride from Scotty from the airport? There's a problem with that? Well, Joe seemed to think there was a problem with that. I mean, he choked me out when I told him. He choked you out? Yeah, he tried to choke me out. In fact, he told me that if he crossed paths with you tonight, he might do the same thing to you. Oh, he's gonna choke me out? That's what he said. So if I, how about this? How about you follow me and we'll go cross Joe's path and we'll see if he chokes me out. Yeah, let's, let's go see that. that. Right, okay. JB, Kevin Nash in pursuit of Samoa Joe. We will stay on top of that breaking story. Up next, it's another semifinal matchup in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament. This is the second semifinal match in the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament scheduled for one fall. Introducing team number one. First, the Prince of Phenomenal, Hey Styles. AJ Styles, Super Eric, because they're going to have their semifinal match against LAX to see who advances to take on Team 3D, who we now know will be in the finals. And the thing about it is, is each match has taken their toll on these guys. AJ Styles came in by holding the, holding his chest, holding his belly, where he strained, and I think that happened when he fell off the ropes. And his tag team partner, Super Earlier tonight at Sacrifice, Styles, Super Eric able to join forces as they eliminated BG, James, and Awesome Kong from the Tag Team Tournament. And now they move on. Super Eric positioned up on top. There goes the cape, pops down. Super Hero makes the entrance. Super Eric, AJ Styles, they need this win to advance in the tournament. Semi-final matchup in the Deuces Wild Tournament. You've got to say, at least at this point, the Hector Guerrero experiment working pretty well for the Latin American exchange. Well, confidence is so high right now with LAX. I mean, they realize how close they are to the championship picture. But you can't look ahead. You can't be thinking about Team 3D right now. Not with AJ Styles and Super Eric in the center of that ring. You've got to be focused, and look at this, Hector Guerrero mixing it up. And I'll tell you what, I like that, because it shows the solidarity that he has with Homicide and Hernandez. And you see Hernandez trying to calm Hector down. Hector Guerrero from our TNA Spanish broadcast team asked to lend that voice of experience for the Latin American exchange in their effort to regain the TNA World Tag Team titles. Hector's there with them at ringside, and yes, we now know that the winner of this matchup will go on in the finals match to face Team 3D. I just gotta go back one more time and, and, and drive home that point about Booker T. Who would have expected at the outset of sacrifice tonight that, that Booker T would have such a big impact on in this Deuces Wild tournament, even though he lost in his first round match? Well, we, we just talked about it. We could just see a change. I mean, you've seen it even, you know, backstage. He just doesn't talk to anybody. He right. just stays to himself. 
and and you know it's just been noticeable but you just you wonder you know what's in his world well we know now that he sent a message and i'll tell you what because of him i really believe that he cost rhino and christian cage from advancing on even as good as team 3d is but another thing, Mike, that's intriguing is this Kevin Nash Samoa Joe situation. Boy, you're not kidding. Kevin Nash is ready to confront Joe right now. Again, that can't be good for Joe before this title match. Although, you know, maybe it's a situation where Kevin Nash just wants to go and let Samoa Joe know exactly what's on his mind. Could it be a possibility here that, that, that maybe Samoa Joe can regain his focus after he and Nash have a meeting? Well, you wonder, though, can you completely trust yeah. him? Wow, Super Eric. Just showing that strength and confidence. And I'm telling you, when you send Hernandez to the floor, you've done something pretty spectacular. And look at Eric. You can see he's measuring it up. Super Eric going after him. But wow, he went right. Just took too, hesitated too long. And Big Hernandez comes right over the top and nails him. Super Eric tossed Super Mex all the way to the floor. Big Hernandez back in. And of all things, the superhero is asking for a test of strength against Hernandez. Wow, Hernandez's not going to turn that down. He doesn't care if the guy's got a cape or not. Look at this, though. you got to admire the Super Eric. But look at Hernandez just using that strength, that just unbelievable power. Powers him down into the pin attempt, but Super Eric momentarily going to try and bridge out of this before that power of Look Hernandez. at that, though. But he's still got the bridge. Good God. Look, using that neck, the neck muscles, and Hernandez putting the weight on him. But Super Eric still able to hold him off. I mean, you got to give Super Eric credit. That was a display of strength there on Hernandez. Quick go behind here by Hernandez. Super Eric drops wow. down, and oh, Hernandez just gets curled right through the ropes and down to the floor. Got to admire. Sir. Wait a minute now. He's using referee Rudy Charles to get himself up to the top. And there he goes for the crossbody block. Wow, knocks him to the concrete. Big crossbody block off the top by Super Eric. AJ Styles outside cheering his superhero partner on. Going to try and roll Hernandez back in a week in Hernandez and get right on him for a cover. So close there to the pin, but Hernandez able to get that shoulder up just at the last second. And as Hernandez kind of rushes Super Eric into the corner and allows AJ Styles to tag himself in, and now AJ taking advantage of a tired Hernandez. That was exactly what he did. Bum rushed him right into the corner. Now Styles is in. Big shot to the back of Hernandez. Boy, I thought he was going to try and suplex him over. Instead, Hernandez just elevates Styles up and sets him down. Positions him on the apron. AJ going to go springboard again. A little better results this time with that flying forearm shot. Well, that just shows you the confidence. You got to get right back on the horse, and he nails him with that flying forearm and almost had the pin as he hits that thing after the springboard and I mean he just has such an impact and now he tags in Super Eric and you gotta like the way they're working together. They're keeping Hernandez isolated and they're doing quick tags. They're not letting Homicide get any momentum and even get in the matchup. Which team will advance to the finals and an opportunity to face Team 3D for the TNA Tag Team Championship. Nice elbow drop, Super Eric leg hook, but two only on Hernandez. It's almost like the speed of these two guys is really throwing Hernandez off. And again, AJ Styles tags himself in as, as Super Eric backs up towards him, and they really are working together so well, and that's what you've got to do if you want to become Tag Team Champions. Off the snap, Mayer. Styles goes airborne and able to drop down with that knee. Ooh, just rocked Hernandez that time. Went back on him for the pin, but Hernandez rolls the shoulder as you see Homicide doing everything within his power to try and get his partner over there and get a tag in. Well, one thing about it, it's going to take a lot to put Hernandez's shoulders down for the three count. I mean, the guy is just so strong. He's just unbelievable, but right now they're wearing him down. It's just the Hernandez that we haven't seen, but now look at him. He gets to his feet, he's got AJ up, and that's what you do. Just put it right on his back. Fall straight back, smart move by Hernandez. Got to get his bearing so that he can tag in Homicide. Super Eric extending his hand into the ring as well. See as Salinas pounded on the apron down here, trying to cheer LAX on, and there you see the tag is in. Super Eric, Homicide, both legal. Wow, Homicide, fresh, 
fired up, but wow, Super Eric just pushes him right into the turnbuckle, and now Hammerstein, look how he just floats right over those. Super Eric's been impressive in this matchup. Slide through that time by Super Eric. Homicide back, a quick hip toss, able to elevate him overhead. Super Eric crashed that time right down to the mat. Here comes Hernandez in, looks like an LAX double team. Well, this is wow, look at that. God. Unbelievable ability, you can't see past him, and he jumps over the top, and here could be the drive-by. There it is. Oh, man, as you see, I put him down. Catapults him right into the clothesline. It's Homicide on top for the cover, and another near fall for the Latin American exchange. Right now, though, their confidence level just growing with each second. Is once they work together, I mean, just nobody does it better than LAX. They just have such a dichotomy. The, the, the cunning and the speed of Homicide in that streak. Look at Hernandez just holding him there, letting the blood rush to his head. It looks like he could do it all day. Unbelievable. At the same time, Homicide has what appears to be an STF type move that time on AJ Styles. And finally, yes, Hernandez crashes Super Eric down. Yeah, that's it. Wow. No. I thought that would just, just by the way he held him up there long enough that Super Eric could be discombobulated and not be able to get the shoulder up, but he's showing his resilience. A nice jawbreaker. Tags in. Now it's AJ and Homicide, and Homicide takes him, just flings him right into the corner. Charges in, both knees in the chest. AJ able to land on his feet with a spin kick. Wow, I tell you, he's just unbelievable. He does things on a nightly basis. You just got to see to believe. Styles clash, fought off by Homicide. Wow, look at that. Stunned him that time, Gringo style. Gringo stunner right on target, and gonna try and get him up in the Gringo killer. Oh, he wants to finish him off, but wait a minute. Super Eric got up to the top rope and brought the sledgehammer right down on Homicide, but wow, Hernandez just goes right after him. Big running clothesline by Hernandez, but check this out. Salinas has got the referee, Rudy Chow. Hector Guerrero rolls in. Look at that. He, he, just, him he over. just positioned Homicide up One, on top. Two, now pin. Got it. What? Got it. LAX wins it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners advancing to the finals, the Latin American Exchange. Hector Guerrero able to slip in, slide in, and get Homicide on top of AJ Styles for the win, for the pin. And how about that? The Latin American Exchange going to move on. They're going to face Team 3D, Super Eric. Disappointed look from, from Super Eric. I mean, think about that matchup though for the World Champ the TNA Tag Team Championship. T3D against LAX. I mean, think back to last year. I mean, the, the history that those two have had, those two teams have had. LAX this close to realizing their dream. We're gonna send it to our broadcast colleague Lauren. She's with members of Samoa Joe's extended family. I'm here with members of Samoa Joe's Ken. Now, guys, you've got to be concerned about your family member tonight. Not only will his TNA world title be on the line with not one, but two competitors, former world champion Scott Steiner and the winner of the Terror Dome match, Kaz, but it seems others may be involved as well, including Joe's mentor, Kevin Nash. You see, Lauren, what people just don't seem to understand is that Samoa Joe just didn't bring his family. He brought his blood. He brought the whole entire Samoa nation. And that's what I'm talking about. So do you mean to say that you would physically get involved if Joe needed you? See, I'm no wrestler. I respect what they do out there in the ring. But blood is blood. And that's where we're coming from. Huh. Joe! Samoa Joe! Why? Uso. Uso for life, brother. Wamato e if so song moe. I will give a poly. I will give a poly. Steiner, who? We are here for you, brother. Fussy, 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 Omar. Joe! Joe! Some Samoa Joe. Joe! Samoa Power! And we are back live in the Impact Zone, and the stars are out tonight at Sacrifice. Check this out. That's Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins, DW. Man, he's a huge wrestling fan, huge sports fan, and He's excited to be here tonight, Mike. No question about it, huge TNA fan as well. Up next at Sacrifice, the TNA Knockouts in action.
All right, ladies. We have a very special match for you girls at Sacrifice. Y'all like makeovers, right? It's time for the TNA Knockout Makeover Battle Royal. This is going to be a very special match because all of you in the ring are going to participate. It's going to start out as an over-the-top rope battle royal. Ten of the most beautiful women in TNA will go head-to-head -head in a knockdown, drag-out, cat fight to the end. The final two competitors will face each other in a ladder match where the winner takes all and will receive a TNA Knockout Championship match. But don't think that we forgot about the runner-up because the runner-up is going to get her head shaved in the middle of the ring. It's going to be a makeover that you'll never forget. At Sacrifice, I'm going to get my TNA Knockout Championship rematch. And I know one thing, that someone's gonna get their head shaved, but it ain't gonna be me. You know what, Velvet? I do not like the sounds of this loser gets their head shaved at sacrifice. Me neither. My hair can't go, it's beautiful. You know who needs to get their head shaved? That stupid Gail Kim. Or that ODB. No, 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 no. I got it. The voodoo freak, Roxy. Roxy. All I know is that I'm not losing my hair. Me neither. Will win a TNA knockout title shot? Who will get their head shaved bald? Find out next in the TNA Knockout Battle Royale. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA Sacrifice continues with the TNA Knockout Makeover Battle Royale and Ladder Match. The winner receives a TNA Women's Knockout Championship match. The loser will have her head shaved bald. Introducing the first two participants from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Angelina Love, and from the Big Apple, Hoobin Sky. Indeed, the barber chair in position tonight at Sacrifice. Beautiful people, Angelina and Velvet, make their way to the ring. They've got an advantage here. They can work together. Well, they're going to have to. they got to make sure that one of them somehow finds a way to get that, that world championship shot the knockout champion. Awesome Kong, but you're right, they can work together to throw people over the top rope. Huge edge for Angelina Love and Velvet Sky, the first two of 10 TNA knockouts competing in this knockout makeover, battle royal and ladder match. The next participant, Raccoon Kong! This is going to be interesting to see, isn't it? Raka Khan associated for the past several months with Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner, as well as Maple Leaf Muscle Petey Williams, as she makes her way down that entrance ramp. Boy, I tell you what, we're going to find out an awful lot, I think, about Raka Khan and her in-ring future in TNA here in this one. Well, she's such an unknown, Mike. I mean, and, and she's got such size and power. You got to look at her to have an advantage. Representing the Latin American Exchange, Paul Venus. Yes, this pay-per-view is called Sacrifice for a reason. Whether it's the body, pride, friendship, or yes, even their hair, there's going to be a sacrifice made here among these 10 knockouts in this matchup. LAX on a roll. Let's see if Salinas can get a TNA knockout title shot against Awesome Kong. Representing the rock and rave infection from Los Angeles, California, Christy Hemme. It really is the ultimate risk reward. I mean, your focus has got to be to try to win to get that title shot, but you put so much at stake because if you finish runner up, that's when the head gets shaved. But this is the message you send. How bad do you want it? The next participant from Minneapolis, Minnesota, ODB! The unpredictability of ODB certainly has to be to her advantage in this matchup. Flask, very familiar flask in hand, little liquid courage as she passes by the ladders that are positioned on both sides of this six-sided ring on both entrances. ODB set for action. Remember, we're going to start this off with an over-the-top rope battle royal. If 
before we move into that ladder match, and you know ODB wants another shot at Austin Kong. From Congo Square in New Orleans, Louisiana, Roxy Laveau. We've really seen the voodoo queen, Roxy Laveau, make big strides here in TNA. Well, you think back the associations that she had with BG James, with Kip James, when she got fired by Kip James. Actually, in my mind, probably the best thing that ever happened to Roxy Laveau here in TNA. I agree, Mike. She's got really an impressive uh, arsenal of offensive moves. Keep your eye on her. And she's fearless and very unpredictable. Your next participant in this match is the part of Tennessee, Jacqueline. How important will the experience factor be in this knockout matchup? Obviously, you look at the 10 individuals involved here, and Jacqueline has, I think, maybe with the exception of Gail Kim, probably the best experience edge over the other competition. And she won't be afraid to risk it all. I mean, she's somebody that knows that her championship matches in the future are going to get, get less and less. This is a great opportunity for her to show she still has it. From St. Mary's, Ontario, Canada, Tracy Brooks. We talked about the voodoo queen, Roxy LeBeau, and how her TNA career really turned around when she was able to go out on her own. If you think about it, I think it's a similar situation here with Tracy Brooks. Ever since Tracy Brooks got rid of the baggage, the baggage of Robert Root Incorporated, she's had an opportunity to move up that ladder and she's just one win away from a TNA knockout title shot. And your final participant from Tampa, Florida, Kim Kim! I think there's nine out of the 10 knockouts that are pretty worried at this point. Their knees are knocking. That's not the case for Gail Kim, because as you recall, Don, the immunity was gained on impact. And what an advantage it is. You can go in there fearless, no matter what happens, you're not gonna end up getting your head shaved. If she finishes second, then whoever was the last person to be eliminated right before her will move into that slot and get her head shaved. So you gotta wonder where you're gonna be at in the elimination factor. But the one thing, Gail Kim, man, she can just go right after it. We're gonna send out our happy Mother's Day wishes here at Sacrifice. And wow, what says Mother's Day more than this knockout battle royal ladder match where one of the 10 gets their head shaved? Oh, we always shake somebody's head at Mother's Day in the, in the West Valley. It's just prediction. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> we try and stay on top of the action here in the battle royal, and Salinas just got shoved right off the apron. I'm not sure, is that gonna be an elimination or not? We'll try to keep our eye on that. We, we kind of missed that, so we'll let you know if she went over the top or... Well, we just found out that Salinas has been eliminated. You know, some of these people, some of these girls, when they get eliminated, they, they're going to be mad at first. They may be relieved afterwards to know at least they kept their head of hair. But like I said, that knockout championship has just become so important. It really has because they have taken women's wrestling to another level, and it really means something to hold that, especially to somehow rest it away from awesome calm. You'll be talked about forever in history in, in women's wrestling, and that's what drives them to try to take this to the distance. You see Angelina Love there with ODB's flask, took that liquid courage, poured it right in the face, right in the eyes of ODB. Tracy Brooks has Velvet Sky, uh, oh, oh, Velvet Sky from the apron comes back. Wow, quite a shot on Tracy Brooks. And then the shoulder block from outside. Nice camera work right there too. Wow, what a shot by Tracy Brooks. And wow, Velvet Sky's been eliminated. Off the apron by Tracy Brooks, and there goes Tracy as well. Well, got to have eyes in the back of your head when you've got that many people in the ring. And she was focused on on gloating, I think, on taking Velvet Sky out. Well, Angelina Love made her pay. 
Yes, over the top rope elimination in this battle royal until we get to the final two. And then at that point, it will turn into a ladder match as we see Christy Henny go airborne, caught by Raka Khan. Let's see the power of this big Raka Khan. Whoa! Wow, she just flipped her right over there like it was nothing. Nice move by Christy Hemi. I admire the courage going after her, but you just didn't realize that strength of Raka Khan and now Jacqueline ODB kind of double teaming Raka Khan here. That's smart move. Something told me that we would have our eyes open one way or the other in terms of Raka Khan. And we see that big power and strength. She just tossed Christy Hemi over the top, eliminated her. But now you're seeing a little bit of teamwork here, which you might need against big Raka Khan. I like how Angelina Love actually came over to help him. They just can't stand her so much. They just went ahead and took her out when she wasn't looking. ODB, though, fearless. ODB's one of those that might even like getting her head shaved. I don't know. Of course, Angelina Love doesn't have the advantage anymore of having her partner Velvet Sky in this match as we see Jacqueline come off that middle rope with a drop kick. Wow. Nice drop really kick. Rock a con. Well, you talked about her experience, Edge. And one thing we know about Jacqueline, that's as tough a girl as you'll ever meet anywhere, any place, anytime. Don't even let sides come into play, but I'll tell you what, as much as, as ODB and Jacqueline have been double teaming Rocket Khan, she's held them off here at every turn. Now they're again Angelina Love comes over to try to help out the three of them, and that's what it takes. How impressive was that? She just fought it off, fought it off. Yep, teamwork, but, uh, however, too much for Rock Akana. She's eliminated. There goes Jacqueline as well. And ODB, is she gonna hang on? No, ODB's out. Both of them. Got caught by surprise, I think they were, oh wait a minute, wow! Angelina Love has been eliminated. That was Roxy LeBeau with the back body drop, and now I think we're down to the final two. Keep in mind. That's Gail Kim's one of the final two, she's got immunity. Keep in mind, Angelina Love would be next in line That's if right. Roxy LeBeau wins. That's the key right here. Ladder match now at this point to come into play. The contract for the TNA knockout title shot is in place, it's in position. And that's exactly the key because if you think about it, should Gail Kim lose this match, then Angelina would get her head shaved. Oh, she can see Angelina Love realizes what might happen. Yeah, I think this is a good move here by Slick Johnson. Slick Johnson is making sure that Angelina, Angelina doesn't Angelina leave. Angelina must stay inside. Gail Kim has already won immunity, so if Roxy Lobo wins this match, Angelina Love will have her head shaved bald. That's because of the immunity situation. At this time, the ladder match will begin. TNA officials positioning Angelina Love in the barber's chair, just in case that's what happens here. And now it's the voodoo queen, Roxy Laveau, and Gail Kim. And we're gonna reiterate that one more time. Should Gail lose, it is Angelina that would get her head shaved because of Gail's immunity situation. Wow, and you saw how upset she was through it. Now, Roxy Laveau going right for that ladder. Now, this is the problem, and you can see Angelina Love. She gets no. right involved, but Roxy just takes that ladder and just levels her. Holy cow, she just spun it right around. But look at Gail Kim going through the ropes, kicking the ladder on Roxy, and then kicks Roxy when she tries to climb back over it. And then Gail drops down, and now Gail's gonna try and get the ladder from the far side of the impact zone and try and put it into play. Oh, Gail Kim wants a win here, Don, so bad. She wants another shot at Awesome Kong and that TNA Knockout Championship. Well, we, we just think back to those great battles between Awesome Kong and Gail Kim. And Gail Kim now, that agility, and she's got Roxy now. Roxy Laveau trying to make her way back into the ring. Can Gail Kim get up there in time? No, she can't, as Roxy gets right there. Look at this. She's got Gail high up, and Gail fighting off. She's gonna try and power bomb her off the ladder. Gail hanging off her dear life, but Gail what? turns it around on her instead. That's just that unbelievable athleticism as she flips it around, and she just sends that ladder right on to Roxy Laval. Knocks her out. And now Gail gonna try and get the ladder back set up, set into position. Contract hanging above the ring. Now what? Gail Kim here, kind of doing an unorthodox move as she moves the ladder all the way, and she's not done. I guess it's knowing she's got immunity, she just has this confidence, and she goes right after her. But Roxy Laveau turns it around on her. Oh, oh shot man. back first right into the ladder. And then the Voodoo Queen follows up, chopped to the chest. 
able to charge in. Oh, my, just sandwiched her. Put all of her weight. Hip attack that time, and heel Kim sandwiched right into the steel ladder. Oh, she took some wicked shots. I mean, she had that opportunity. Gail Kim was there. I think she had Roxy DeVoe in a position where she couldn't have stopped her, but Gail Kim just wanted to inflict more damage. And I think it's just, just being in that ladder match and, and seeing things that are done in, in, in the past, wanting to, to do it. Look at this. Wow! She just flips her right over the top onto the ladder. Gail Kim, just so many different ways she can beat you. What a competitor this Gail Kim is, and boy, we've sure been impressed with Roxy as well, as we see Angelina Love, for some reason, getting involved here, taking the ladder, sliding it into play, and she slid it into Gail Kim. Well, she needs Gail or, Kim or, to win. Gail Kim just said, that's exactly the situation right there. She, she wants Gail Kim to win. The, the last thing she would need is a win for the Voodoo Queen, Roxy Laveau. Oh, you can see that she's running her hands right through her hair. There you see the contract, and, and Roxy Laveau meets her up, and both of them are at the top as they're trading blows. Oh, Gail Kim slamming that head to the top of the ladder. Oh, Gail my God! What? Whoa! She just put her on her back. Gail Kim! Please, I'll tell you something, there's just something special about the TNA knockouts. I mean, you forget that there are women in that ring. They just have so much ability. Gail Kim looks like she's busted on the head. What a power bomb that was by Gail Kim as Gail tries as well. And Roxy basically knocked out. And wait a minute, Angelina's got the leg of the voodoo queen, Roxy LeBeau hook. But Roxy LeBeau realizing what a shot to Angelina Love. Now it's Gail. Gail Kim and Roxy LeBeau squaring off. And oh, oh man! Boy, Buster back and head first on the ladder. My God. Holy cow! Wait a minute, oh, whoa, 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 Velvet Sky just rolled in. Wow. And you see Roxy LeBeau right there just letting her have it. And now, yes, the voodoo queen trying to make her way up. Oh, but you see Angelina Love, she can't allow it. And she pushes Roxy off of the top of the ladder into the ropes. And now you see Gail Kim putting the ladder into place, and Gail Kim's gonna try and climb up that ladder. And you see Gail Kim, there she is! And she's gonna get that contract! And she's got it! And she'll get another title shot against Awesome Kong! Thanks to Angelina Love! Kim! And how happy is Angelina Love? Good call. She was doing everything she could to be. She became Gail Kim's best friend. But what an unbelievable matchup. They did everything that Finn would do with those ladders and Gail Kim. And now look at this. She goes right after Angelina Love and lets, lets her know. Oh, she just threw her into the chair. Holy cow. The TNA knockouts here as we see. Gail Kim, she was trying to put Angelina Love into that chair, but no, it's, it's Roxy. Boy, you can see though Gail Kim just going right after her. Oh, trying to set her up and do whatever she can, but look at this, the beautiful people fighting her off. Roxy bleeding, the bottom line is, holy cow, look at this. It's just going crazy, the anger. But it still doesn't change the fact that Roxy Lamont is gonna get her head shaved. What an absolutely out of control situation here at Sacrifice with these TNA knockouts. This thing is nuts. Well, I'm telling you what, the, just what has happened here between Gail Kim, just, just, I think she's upset realizing that Roxy Laveau is gonna get her head shaved. Well, you can see the, the blood on the, on the face of Roxy Laveau. I saw it with the ladder in your right. I saw it earlier on Gail, but it, it must have just rubbed off from, from Roxy Laveau, but oh no. It's gonna happen, she finished second. And this is Todd Tyree, the barber who's taking the shears to the head of Roxy LeBeau. And yes, we said it, one of these knockouts was gonna get their head shaved and it is Roxy LeBeau because of Angelina Love and Velvet Sky. Well, Angelina Love just, she did everything she could. She couldn't afford and you could even see Gail Kim. The look on her face I'm looking at right in front of me and she's almost in tears realizing what's gotta happen. And Todd Tyree, he's gonna have to use the scissors first, I think, to, 
but try to take the length off before he starts using the shears. Yeah, that's the key here. You've got to use those scissors before you can use the shears after being in this matchup. Oh boy, as you saw the other knockouts right around the ringside area here. Watching as Roxy Laveau gets her head shaved at sacrifice. Well, it was the ultimate set. Look at the beautiful people. They're loving it. They know that they've ticked off Gale. They ticked off Roxy Laveau, and they know they get to keep their hair. And Oh, it's hard to cut that with the sweat that's been involved. But unbelievable. And there you see Tracy Brooks holding the hand of the voodoo queen. Roxy Laveau here. We're trying to give her some strength, Don. Oh, man, they're just they're, they're showing a, a, some support there for her as, as they know this has got to be tough. And you can, oh, look at the scout. Wow. Oh, it's hard to watch. But we told you someone was going to get their head shaved, and it is. Oh, man. There you see the cut. From the contact made with the ladder, I believe. Oh, man, what a what a battle. They wanted it so bad. Gail Kim and Roxy Laveau, they put on a ladder match that you couldn't believe. And, and the reaction of Angelina Love and Velvet Sky is sickening at this point. Well, and the crowd, I think, is so upset that they that Roxy's getting that there her head shaved and they I think they wanted to see Angelina Love or Velvet Sky but hey it came down to the last two and Gail Kim had to go for the championship and she did oh man tough for Roxy Laveau but she was so valiant in her effort and you're impressed with how how she was mm. The voodoo queen, Roxy Laveau, has her head shaved, bald as a result of this TNA knockout makeover battle royal and ladder match. And Gail Kim gets the shot at Awesome Kong in the knockout championship. And the beautiful people are loving every minute of it. Oh, you can see him grabbing the hair, grabbing the hair and just flaunting it. And it's tough to look at that. It really is. And again, they're just taunting Gail Kim. But Roxy Laveau, the loser tonight in this situation, she was so close to getting that title shot. You see ODB, you see Salinas, Tracy Brooks offering support to the Voodoo Queen. Tell you what, that's we, someone it was going to happen to, and Gail. Gail Kim gets the title shot. Voodoo Queen gets her head shaved. We're going to send it to JB with Kevin Nash. They're in search of Samoa Joe. Hey, Kevin, you sure this is a good idea? I mean, he tried to choke me out earlier. He's not in a good mood. I don't do anything that's not a good idea. What's he going to do, smack around, choke me out? Well, he's the champ. I should be scared. I'm going to show this young rookie who's running the show around here. Yeah. Hey, sorry I'm late. I was watching a chick get her. You son of a bitch! I was going to wait to talk to your mentor. Mentor my ass, Kevin. I knew I should have never trusted you. What do you think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw you, is that I it? don't think anything, Kevin. I know how you work. I know how you operate. And if you try anything out there tonight, I swear to God, I'll break you in the process. Oh, you're going to break me? Uh, yes, I'm going to break you. Shut up and listen. What I did today was old school. What do you think? I'm in a car with Steiner because I want to hang out with them, talk politics? I picked his brain, man. He thinks I'm on his team. He don't know what's going on. We do. Hell, what do you think you're going to go? Month after month? Using your body, being a brute, kicking people's asses? That ain't gonna work. You gotta use your brain. That's why you need me. I don't need anybody, and I sure as hell have never needed you. Oh, you don't need me. No, I don't. You don't need me. Well, how about this? I'm gonna sit my big ass right here. You go out tonight. You need me, you give me the high sign. Maybe I'll be there. Maybe I won't. You know what? Let me make this easy for you. You show up at that ring tonight, you're on the wrong team and in my sights. Talked about the stars being out tonight at Sacrifice here in Orlando. We saw Billy Corgan of the Pumpkins earlier. This is Saving Abel with their top 10 hit, Addicted, and they are live here in Orlando. Well, it's just a big night here at Sacrifice as we still got coming up. The world the heavyweight championship, but now the Deuce is Wild Finals. No question about it, we will look at the bracket. Let's see exactly how we got to this point. 
You see how Team 3D advanced, starting with the quarterfinals onto the semis, and now the finals, and now we are set for Team 3D. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, to face Homicide and Hernandez, the Latin American exchange, and what's at stake here is the goal, the TNA World Tag Team Championship. There it is, Tag Team Championship matchup. It's next, it's 3D, it's LAX. Let's see who wins, Deuces Wild. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the finals of the Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament scheduled for one fall. The winners will be crowned the new TNA World Tag Team Champions. Introducing team number one, Brother Ray, Brother Devon, they are Team 3D! Brother Ray, Brother Devon, just a three count away from that 21st reign that they've been talking about as Tag Team Champions. Let's review, Don, how they got to this point right here against, yes, Sting and James Storm. And there you see Storm go through the table. Unbelievable, Don, and Sting just had enough of James Storm. It's his antics, and then later on, it was the kendo stick brought in by Johnny Devine, and he put it right to the head of the war machine. Yes, Booker T, weakened Rhino and Christian Cage, and that allowed 3D to move to the finals. See Brother Ray. Look at Brother Ray looking at that TNA Championship Tag Team belt positioned here on the table, but Brother Ray, you need one more win. Two victories down for Team 3D, but the key is they need three to become the champions once again. And their opponents, accompanied to the ring by Salinas and Hector Guerrero, Homicide and Hernandez, the Latin American Exchange. Comes Homicide and Hernandez, and we will review as well how LAX got to this point. Started off with Kip James and Matt Morgan. How about that drop kick by Hernandez? Well, it was the miscommunication, the inexperience of working together that cost Kip James and Matt Morgan. And then Super Eric, AJ Styles, Hector Guerrero got pushed by AJ. Later on, Hector turned around on AJ by putting Homicide on top, and they got the pin. Yep, able to roll that pile over, enabling the Latin American exchange to advance to this point. It is time for the final. This is it. This is what Deuces Wild is all about. And it's time for the Latin American exchange to take on Team 3D. And we're going to decide who the new World Tag Team Champions will be. Hector Guerrero from the yes, Spanish broadcast team. He's right here at our broadcast table, Don, and he's seeing just one more win. Well, uh, since he's been with well, them, what an minute, inspiration. Wait a, minute, oh. wait a minute. Look at this. We've got 3D right in the face of Hector Guerrero here, right in front of the broadcast table. You can see. This, this, this confrontation that they've got here, and boy, the Latin American exchange not happy about it. Well, they're Homicide demanding. Hernandez, they're, yeah, they're right in Hector's face out here. They're demanding. Yeah. Whoa! I mean, a tope can heal right from the start. Homicide had had enough, and he stole dressing down Hector Guerrero, and what a way to start for LAX. I mean, they caught 3D by surprise, and that's exactly what you gotta do with their experience. Wow. Well, you talk about jump starting a match. You got that's that exactly right. what LAX just did. 3D in the face of Hector Guerrero, and boy, Homicide and Hernandez. Oh, Whoa. my God, there goes Brother Ray right into that guardrail. I mean, just smashed right into the guardrail, and the crowd went flying back. Brother Devon, though, able to turn it around on Homicide and start throwing punches around, but look at Hernandez trying to show that strength. But it looks like Brother Ray's able to turn it around on him. Just suplexed him onto the ramp. Well, you're right, amazing power move there. Didn't see that one, but what a shot there by Devon as well on Homicide. Oh, oh boy, bodies laid out all over the impact zone already. Brother Ray, keep your eye on him. He's got a chair in his hands. Well, it was a great start by LAX, but anybody can turn it back in their favor quick. It's 3D. Look at this. Now he's applying the pressure of the chair right into the neck of Hernandez, just driving it down like a wedge. Oh, man. Steel 
chair right across the windpipe of Hernandez. Homicide trying to fight off Brother Devon. There's another shot to the back with the chair. Brother Ray put it right on Hernandez. Boy, you talk about stopping their momentum in a hurry. Team 3D did. Unbelievable. Homicide, though, fighting back with everything he's worth. On Brother Devon, and then the shot by Brother Ray on Hernandez into the steel steps. Right now, Team 3D. They can feel it. They can feel number 21. They know how close they are to history. And you know, this isn't the first meeting between these two. Think back to lockdown last year at St. Louis in April of 2007, Don. Well, that was when Team 3D won the championships. And think about it. I don't believe LAX has been champion since ever. They, they, beat them. they beat the Latin American Exchange at lockdown in St. Louis. And you're right. It has been since April of 2007 since they've been the champs. Oh, man, this thing is just never, never been under control at all. Over a year since LAX has been champions, and you can see how they feel it. Look at Hernandez, shot after shot. I'll tell you something, he can turn it around in a heartbeat, and he had to. Now he's walking over to Brother D, but I think to help out Amistad, and there it is. He goes right after him, and now he can see he's going to send him into the ring. I don't think that the bell has even rang for this match yet, has it? No, oh, now they're ringing it. I mean, it just got jump started from the top. I mean, it was just to take a, took a life of its own, Mike. It was tough to stay on top of the action when you got Homicide flying through onto 3D. Bodies going all over the place here at the broadcast table. And now we see after the bell is rung, Homicide almost got the three count right there. Well, Homicide just, I, I talk about it so much. The guy just fearless. I mean, he'll put his body on the line any, any chance that he can. He knows what he has in a partner, Hernandez. And, they use each other so well. Look at Homicide going up top, but he doesn't realize Brother Ray position, and man, just sends him flying, flipping over into the ring. Brother Ray looks on as we see Devon take Homicide, got in position oh. across the apron, and then just drives that big elbow right across the neck and chest. And then puts it right back into the hands of Brother Ray, and you saw that elbow right to the top of Homicide's head. Take Homicide now. Brother Ray going to try and shoot him off and does into the ropes. Homicide sends him flip over, but oh, Brother Ray just overpowered him first with the big punch and now with that knee right across the head. Just driving the knee in, using that weight. And then the headbutt. And you can see that Team 3D now going to make quick tags. They're going to keep Homicide isolated on this side. And oh, a shot to the back. Homicide just crumbles right there, just drops right down. Quite a beat down here by 3D in anticipation of that 21st title reign as World Tag Team Champions. And Brother Devon using all the power and weight behind that. That big leg got the boot right across the throat. Homicide trying to fight back, do anything, everything within his power, but he gets cut off by Brother Ray. You know, sometimes a match is, I mean, it's all about matchups. And certain teams just fare better against others. Right. They just don't have the same chemistry and they just can't get things going. The Team 3D seems to have LAX's number. Every time LAX seems to get something going, Team 3D can stop it in its tracks and look at the strength of Brother Devon just holding Homicide up in the air and then bringing him down and you can see Homicide in pain. Brother Devon oh, almost got the pin. You're right, pin attempt off the high vertical by Brother Devon of 3D, but Homicide not going to allow his shoulders to be down for the three count. And Devon again just going to try and wear down even more. Try and wear down LAX in general, but in particular, Homicide at this point. Hernandez wants in in a bad way. But look how Brother Devon keeps his body between Homicide and Hernandez. He makes sure that he's always between them if he can. Nice jawbreaker by Homicide. But look at that. He just, just. Saunders right over there to Brother Ray, not realizing where he is, and Brother Ray took advantage of it. Another pit attempt by Devon, and another two count, another near fall for 3D. Tag in, Brother Ray gonna dish out more punishment here to Homicide. It's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Every time it looks like LAX is getting something to go their way, it just bounces right back to Team 3D, and you can see 21, he's showing the 21 sign, meaning champion. World title number 21 coming here tonight. Boy, just toying with Homicide here. Drives him down, and now Brother Ray drops down and back to the wrestling basics with the head scissors applied. Oh, just taking the air out of Homicide and just applying those big legs to the neck. 
and just pressing there to just wear him down. You can see Homicide, the hand up, just trying to, to gather whatever strength he can. And then Brother Ray just sends another shock to him, and Homicide cannot get over to Hernandez to make the tag. Oh, just painfully obvious that 3D's taking advantage of a situation here. Homicide not able to get on track. Well, that could be the move that sets him free, however. Devon crashes in the corner. Homicide able to take down Brother Ray. You see Hector Guerrero pounded on the apron outside. Hernandez pounded on the turnbuckle, trying to get Homicide over to get the tag in and get this big super mechs into the battle. Well, you can't measure a man's heart, and what a counter that he was able to use, and here it is. Here comes Super Mex, and he goes right after with those big elbows, those big forearms. And a clothesline for Brother Ray. Another big lariat for Devon. Brother Ray sent for the ride as he comes off the ropes. Whoa! Big back body drop that time by Hernandez. LAX has turned it around behind the big Super Mex. And very few people can give those two guys back body drops back to back. Oh, he just puts their heads together. And now look at him. Whoa, the drop kick that nails both of them and sends Brother Ray outside the ring and Devon. Boy, you're right. Dual drop kick that time. Oh, no, no. Look out. Here look he goes. Out. Here he comes. Supermax. Wow, did you see that extension Hernandez got by? That's unreal. I don't know if we can see that if that's possible. You just whoa, whoa, Wait a minute, whoa, whoa. wait a Keep minute. Your Divine. Not him again. Johnny Devine played an important role here earlier, bringing the kendo stick down. Referee Hebner, I don't think, has seen it. Referee Hebner checking on 3D. Devine's going to try and get a table into play, the trademark table of 3D. And he's trying to set it up right there outside of the ring. And he's got it set up. It took so much out of Hernandez just when he went flying over the ropes. And again, you see Hector Guerrero coming around going, oh, what are you doing? Hector Guerrero, confrontation now with Johnny Devine swinging this with the kendo stick. And look at Hector with those shots. Boy, Hector Guerrero not going to put up with it. Oh, he takes a shot at Johnny Devine with that kendo stick. Little batter up for Hector Guerrero. Kendo stick shot for Johnny Devine. And now Hector's got the table. Look, Hector Guerrero moving the table around ringside. Well, he figures if it's there, he's going to take advantage of it. And look at him go right after Johnny Devine. Crowd loving it. He's got him set up on the table. Another shot. Look at Hector laying that shot. Oh, what? no way. What Hector the Guerrero. What's going on here tonight? Listen to this. This night's gone crazy. You're going to be what? Hector. Hector. He's going up here to the top. Johnny, look at you can see referee Earl Hebner trying to stop him. Hector Guerrero, is he going to do it? Here he goes. Wow. Just kicks him right through the table. That's how you stop Johnny Devine. Hector Guerrero, good God. Please show us again this drop kick right into the chest, and he puts Devine right through the wood. Well, I'll tell you what, bringing him along is looking better and better for LAX. And now, Brother Ray goes right after Hernandez. Now you Puerto Rican piece of trash. Here comes Brother Ray charging at Hernandez, who gets the boot up. Look at that strength, though, Hernandez, just waiting for him. And he just takes that shot. Oh, man, Brother Ray ripping the shirt. It's just kind of just a, a test of wills here as one shot after another. Brother Ray gonna try and go to the power game. Super Max Hernandez fighting him off. Oh, Brother man. Ray Super. Whoa, oh, man, Super Flash. Wow. And now Hernandez is sitting there. And here comes Brother Diva. Oh, what a headbutt. What Three, a headbutt. A pin. That's it. Two. He got the shoulder up just in time. LAX is still alive. 3D on the verge of becoming World Tag Team Champions for the 21st time. But amazingly enough, Hernandez able to avoid the three count. Here it is. There's the 3D that they put on Homicide, and now they've got him. You could, wait a minute. They let up on Homicide, and they go right after Hernandez. Earl Hebner, I think potentially here, the question is who the legal man was in this matchup. I think well, Earl Hebner says that it's Hernandez. Well, but all I did was get Hernandez a chance to regroup, and he hits the double clothesline. And now you've got Homicide going up, and wow, what a shot on Brother Ray as he spun him around. And look at this string, spine buster, and just slams him down on top of it. But Devon is there with a flying forearm shot that just nailed Big Hernandez. Both teams now trying to fight for an advantage, and Brother Devon going up here, Homicide, going to try to take him out. 
Hernandez, though, making his way over, and it smacks Devon in the back. Oh, look at this. He's got him up. Look out. Could it be the Border Dawes? Not on Devon. Border yes. Dawes. And now Hovenstein goes up to the top. Frog splash. This is their chance. One, two, got it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, the new DNA World Tag Team Champions, the Latin American Huge Chain. Hector Guerrero comes through, taking Johnny Devine now. And that allowed Hovenstein Hernandez to get back into this meltdown. And guess what, Mike? It's been over a year. But LAX are the Tag Team Champions here in TNA. What do you think of that frog splash off the top by Homicide out of the Eddie Guerrero playbook? Boy, I'll tell you what, that's where that Guerrero influence came in, and it really was special, and it was such a great move. Bringing Hector in, and you see Selena down celebrating, Hector out celebrating. The border toss followed by the frog splash was too much for Brother Devon. LAX, they said 2008 was going to be their year, but it was the acquisition of the experience factor. Hector Guerrero comes into play, and yes, they do it. LAX becomes TNA World Tag Team Champions once again. Let's look at some replays of this matchup right here, and there it was. There was the five-star frog splash, and it was enough, and Brother Devon had the shoulders pinned, and LAX, and this crowd erupted. There's just something about LAX that you respect and you like. There's just something about the chemistry that they have, and this place went crazy, Professor. Absolutely, DW, couldn't agree with you more. In essence, party time here in the Impact Zone. Everybody loves the fact that LAX are the new Tag Team Champions. Wow, Mike today, Tom West, back at the broadcast position here. The big three-way still to come. You see the headsets here for our man, Frank Trigg. Frank's gonna join us for the three-way TNA, yes, world hip. Eric Young. Hey guys, I don't know if you heard that. You know where the next pay-per-view is gonna be? Memphis, Tennessee. We got you. Hey, and you know who lives in Memphis, Tennessee, don't you, oh, Mike? Who's that? Elvis Presley. Well, well you, you know what? To. I'm gonna go there. Wait, 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 wait. Elvis has been dead for 30 years, Eric. Hey, that's what they want you to believe, but we're smarter than that, are we, guys? We're smarter than that. I'm gonna on a mission. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna give them tickets. You know how many Elvis sightings there have been in the last year, Mike? You know how many? I don't 523. Know. What, you been reading the Globe again? Yeah, uh, last, hey, the Globe is a reliable source. Yeah, last sure. week, someone spotted him eating ice cream at a Jack in the Box in Kalamazoo. I'm going to Memphis, I'm on a mission. I'm leaving right now from the impact zone. I'm going there, I'm gonna find him. He's gonna be in my corner, he's gonna be on my side. Elvis lives, guys, Elvis lives. Memphis, Tennessee. He's just not right. Memphis, Tennessee, <laughs> he's headed to find Elvis. <laughs> wow. See, it's Slammiversary in Memphis. Wow. It is time for our main event. Yes, TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup. Three-way matchup. We now know, yes, that Kaz is going to be involved as well. I'm going to break it down for you here with the bullet points, the tail of the tape, and it was Earlier tonight, yes, Kurt Angle announcing that due to doctor's orders, not able to compete in this World Championship matchup. The Kevin Nash arrival with Scott Steiner, boy, it set off locker room fireworks. I don't know about that trust factor between Nash and Joe, maybe at an all-time low. It was Kaz winning the Terror Dome. It enables him to take Kurt Angle's spot. Yes, one of the two challengers for Samoa Joe. Biggest opportunity of Kaz's career, now just minutes away. Yes, here he comes. Yes, one of the two challengers. His chance to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship coming up next as Kaz makes his way here into the impact zone for the world's title match. And here he is, and what an effort to get to this spot. As Kaz able to make his way up through that steel asylum, the Terror Dome, 
and was rewarded with a championship out. And think about this. You know that Joe's been thinking about nothing but Steiner and Angle, and vice versa. Now they've got to put Kaz into the equation. And there you see the second challenger. Yes, it's Big Papa Pump. It's the genetic freak Scott Steiner, because along with Kaz, it's his chance as well to win this TNA World's Heavyweight title for the very first time. Weighs in at 270 pounds. Scott Steiner was an amateur wrestler for the Michigan Wolverines, where he became a collegiate All-American. The Big Bad Booty Daddy has wrestled for every major professional wrestling organization during his 22-year career and has held dozens of championships during his legendary run. The Genetic Freak is a powerhouse in the ring and offers no apologies for his actions. Tonight, Scott Steiner will try and become TNA World Heavyweight Champion for the first time ever. And as Big Papa Pop Scott Steiner makes his way into the impact zone, we are joined here at the broadcast table by no MMA fight, but the UFC, Martin Pride, TNA analyst Frank Trigg. Welcome to Sacrifice, Frank Trigg. Uh, we're just sitting here and, and finally getting that name of TNA analyst. I'm real happy on my third show, I finally get a name. You're part, go, of the, part of the family, Frank. We know how tough it is, though, and we'll talk about it in a minute, about Kurt Angle not being out here for you tonight. Yes, we will get Frank Triggs' thoughts on Kurt Angle not being involved in this matchup as we see the walk. From the locker room area, he's the defending TNA World Heavyweight Champion, the Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe, on his way to defend the gold. He stands six foot two and weighs in at 280 pounds. The Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe, fulfilled his destiny last month at lockdown when he defeated Kurt Angle in one of the most talked about matches of the year. Perhaps the greatest match in TNA history. Joe used his ground and pound and MMA style to punish Kurt Angle and capture his first ever heavyweight championship. Samoa Joe has vowed to sacrifice everything in order to keep his title around his waist. Nothing will stop him, and nobody will take away his gold. And here they are. You saw them earlier, the extended family of the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, the Samoan Submission Samoa Joe, the Samoan dancers are in place as they welcome the champ into the impact zone. Here comes Samoa Joe. Technique-wise, obviously, with Marcus Davis helped out quite a bit, but I'm still not convinced that he's going to be able to beat a complete Kurt Angle again if that match ever would have happened one more time. Yes, Samoa Joe set to defend the gold. Two challengers are in place. We're going to send it to the six-sided ring. Our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash, for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Andrew Thomas. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida, it's time for your sacrifice main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, he stands behind me, weighing in at 222 pounds, comes to us from Anaheim, California. He is challenger number one. He is the KAZ Cats. And now introducing challenger number two. He is accompanied to the ring tonight by P.D. Williams and Raka Khan. He comes to us from the great state of Michigan and weighs in at 270 pounds. This is Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 280 pounds and comes to us from the Isle of Samoa. He is the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Cho. Sacrifice main event. TNA World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Frank Trigg, I need to get your thoughts immediately on the injury situation involving one Kurt Angle. And I think earlier you used the word risk. You thought that the risk factor too high for Kurt Angle, that as well, what his doctor ordered. So one of the things that he and I always talked about is recovering from injuries, and if he's gonna come out here with an injury like, his, like that where his neck is right now, try to battle through it, he's just gonna be worse. He'll be out for months, and he may lose again tonight. It's not worth it to take a risk in his career for his longevity here at TNA, trying to be able to compete consistently over the next couple of months. He needs to take just a couple weeks off. He'll be a lot better for it. What the power of Samoa Joe so evident there. And the double clothesline move then follows up in the corner. <laughs> Duly effective right there. Caught Steiner with two shots, and there's one for Cass. He really is amazing for the agility that he has for a big man. I know that's something that you commented on the last time that you saw him in a title match last month at Lockdown, Frank. I mean, it, he, he can't judge a book by his cover when it comes to the Samoan submission machine. Look at his body. It doesn't look like a guy that you would think. Steiner looks like the faster, bigger, stronger, more technical guy, but he's not. Samoa Joe is just that kind of wrestler. I'm very impressed with him. He's a lot better. I gave him credit for when he battled Kurt Angle last month. You see Kaz reeling off that shot. Big one. Cut Samoa Joe, but Joe able to turn it around. Fires Kaz off, and then his Kaz springs off the middle rope. Joe just walks away, and Kaz catches is nothing but canvas on the way down. Well, he sets him up for it. I mean, he really does. He just makes you feel like you're going to get him and then just casually walks away and it plays in your mind that he has that much control over you during the match. But now look at him grabbing that leg and pulling back on it. Got twerking right there with that single leg crab. Let's talk about the situation that Kaz is involved in here. Opportunity of a lifetime, no doubt. But at the same time, and what? Got to call the submission hold here as you see that armbar applied by Joe on Steiner. He's got a reverse armbar. This is actually a great judo move. One of the, one of the, actually one of the moves I used to use when I competed in judo still. The, the problem with Kaz, though, is we get back to him real quick, is that it, he wasn't prepared for this. He wasn't prepared to compete two times in one night. And with the commissioner threw it at him as he's already in the cage. It, it's, it's impossible to be ready for this. Hopefully mentally he's prepped, physically he's just not going to be there. Joe working on the knees of Kaz, first with the dragon screw leg whip, but then as he goes to the submission move, you see that Steiner from behind able to nail it. So, I mean, it's a great opportunity for Kaz, but at the same time, after competing in that grueling terror dome match, well, he's at a disadvantage here, but he does have that rush of adrenaline. Now, gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that I think Steiner, if he's smart, is going to keep using Kaz as advantage. So Kaz the Joe's Wolves and let him come in as a little sheep and bang him out of the way. Well, absolutely. You, you, you have to take advantage and try to stay out of it as much as you can to save your strength. Let the other two battle it and then take advantage of it. As you see, Samoa Joe just clotheslined Scott Steiner all the way out of the ring onto the floor. What perfect follow-up move after the T-bone suplex by Joe, but the leg sweep by Kaz is able to take the champ down, and now he springs back. Oh, no, Joe able to move out of the way once again. Going to take Kaz up and just overpowered him right here. One, 
two. Kaz gets his shoulder up. You know, don't underestimate Kaz, but we remember those battles that he had with Christian Gage. Now he showed everybody how ready he was for this moment. And when you're that kind of an athlete, an opportunity can come your way. And if he can get it, he's going to try to slip it in. And, and think also of how Kaz really took Kurt Angle to the That's limit. That's exactly right. You know, if it was up to me, and, and the way that both these guys have competed before, Kaz is coming back up their second match. It would be two against one. If I would try to form a relationship right now with Kaz, to make every time that he's heard, I'm going to hold Joe, it's going to be Joe versus the two of us the entire night. Let us battle for the heavyweight title later. Well, how about Steiner turning around in a hurry? First, he takes Joe, sends him into the guardrail, steel guardrail, then lays out Kaz with a big clothesline. And look out, now he's got Joe. Where's he going to take him? Well, he goaded Kaz, and what a knife edge shot to the chest of Samoa Joe. And you can see the confidence just brimming on Big Papa Pump, using that strength, and now look at that, he's gonna take him up, and oh, suplexed him over, and he landed on his head. Wicked shot to the head of Samoa Joe. Wow, I don't know if I can be able to recover from that. I'm telling you, Joe, Joe is a big guy to get that kind of weight up there and have it all on top of his head like it did. I don't know if Joe's gonna get back into the ring. What? Super impressive move by Steiner, who's able to roll into that bottom rope and break the count, and then continue the battle out here. Now it's Kaz that goes into the steel guardrail. Steiner momentarily looks at Joe, but he sees that Joe's laid out, and now he turns his attention back to Kaz. I can't take my eye off of Samoa Joe right here in front of us on the ramp as he's just holding the back of that head, and it was a, a sickly sight, Mike, when you saw how his head hit first, but Samoa Joe, we know that he's come back from unbelievable odds, but right now, Scott Steiner in total control, and you mentioned it earlier, how much does Kaz have in the tank after what it took? Wow, wow. that strength! Belly to belly, released overhead suplex by Steiner. Now takes out Joe, sends Joe back out to the floor. Steiner with that incredible amateur background as well. You know, Steiner, we're, we're related by one, one degree of separation. My manager, Rico Triparelli. One year, Iowa had nine guys in the finals with nine champs. There's 10 weight classes. Steiner beat my manager, Rico Triparelli, in the semifinals and stopped him from being 10 guys in the finals with 10, with 10 champs in the Big Ten. You know, Steiner obviously is a great athlete and very smart the way he's approaching this match, at least to this point. Boy, he is. He's just taking control. Look at this. Right after Joe again goes off the ring apron and just applies that weight and that power and sends Joe back down, trying to hit his head into the mat any chance that he can. Scott Steiner right now just methodical in this, Mike. I was going to say game plan working to perfection for Big Papa Pump. He takes care of Samoa Joe, keeps him out of the picture, and now he can focus 100% on Kaz. Kaz just kind of you mentioned it frank just not able to, to get that strength up against these two big guys it just took so much out of him there when he climbed up through the tarot dome earlier out. big oh. fall away slam man you know, he's you know not the message just gonna say he's a smaller guy than three guys he's also one guy that worked so hard earlier tonight you know it's it's really a testament to how good Kaz is gonna be if he had time to rest he's really taken for both these guys tremendously but I just, he just seems to be a half step behind everybody. How about Joe? He, that was desperation save there. He was able to break that up because I think Kaz was going down. And Scott Steiner now does that belly to belly on Samoa Joe. And look at this. Oh, wow. man. Oh, overhead. Man. Overhead and right on the head of Kaz. He got that right. Scott is going to go back to the well and get oh. it on Joe. And Joe again grabs the back of that head that he'd already damaged on the ramp earlier, Mike. Frank, I mean, Samoa Joe right now, you gotta wonder how bad the bell's run. I, he's moving so slow, the first bang over here on the ramp, now he's inside the ring, got hit again. I don't, he's having a hard time recovering, hopefully he's got something a little bit left in the tank. Steiner in total control. You talk about being in the driver's seat. Positions Kaz up on the top turnbuckle. Gonna go for the recliner here. He's gonna get that chin lock in place. Steiner recliner, submission apply. Oh, look at him apply the pressure, and you can see the pain in Joe's face. And you wonder through all this well, how much the Kevin Nash situation has taken effect of Joe, where he didn't come into this thing completely committed, Mike and Frank. You know, really, you know, here's the thing, it meant, it mentally it's going to wear on you, you just beat a great guy in Kurt Angle, you're trying to maintain this title, all the pressure's on Samoa Joe to maintain and hold the title, you got a huge, strong guy like Big Papa Pump on your back right now, he sits in a little bit deeper, Samoa Joe's going to have to lose the title and submit. Look at this Samoa Joe though, Wow! what a display of strength, as he's got Steiner on the shoulders of Cass, it's the drop kick and Steiner goes.
goes back hard. But Kaz takes advantage of a situation right there. Well, you got him up on the shoulders. Why not try that missile drop kick? And he was on target with it as we see all three men. The champ, the two challengers laid out. I think we're going to take another look. Perfectly, and Joe able to get to his feet, and Kaz actually helped him out there. Takes a shot on Steiner, and it takes the weight off of his shoulders, and now, can Joe get back up? He's still reeling as Kaz and Steiner are trading off here. A spin kick that time by Kaz. Follow-up move, springing off the middle rope, dropping the leg, right on the pin attempt, right on the cover, and no, two only before Steiner rolls the shoulder. Now, I keep saying Kaz seems to be a half step behind. I think I'd call myself a liar at this point. Because now Kaz is caught up. He's a half step ahead of everybody else now. Is it just the adrenaline, Frank, that takes over in a situation like that? You've been there so many times. You get a shot to all of a sudden get the heavyweight title, and you've been sitting around all day waiting for this moment. All of a sudden you get it. Of course, the adrenaline's going to take over. Big suplex move there by Samoa Joe on Kaz. Now Steiner able to reverse. Sends Joe into the corner, but oh. Joe's prepared. Joe's ready. Joe just overpowered him. I love when he does that. It's just such a such a display of strength, and it really does just send shockwaves through Rock your mind. Rock up on the apron. Keep your eyes on her. She's got referee Andrew Whoa, he's got the pipe. Scott Steiner, he's got that lead pipe. Look out. Oh. Oh. Suicide dive by Samoa Joe. Near 300 pounds flying through the ropes, and Steiner was there and caught him with the pipe. Obviously, Rocka Khan, Petey Williams able to get that pipe slid to him, and Samoa Joe took a wicked shot. But look at Kaz, he comes flying over the top and sends Big Papa Pump to the mat, but Joe still knocked out with that pipe shot, guys. I've said it before in MMA, and I'm going to say it again tonight. Your corner is very important. Obviously, Scott Steiner's corner has helped him get through this match thus far. Slingshot in, side roll pin. Here's two. Steiner gets that shoulder up again. Kaz using that athletic ability to his benefit. Almost got the pin, guys. I mean, he just is really an amazing athlete. Look at him. Just doesn't give up. Nice shoulder block in, and look at him come right over here with a DDT. Outside in, DDT, follow pin. Two. And oh! oh. At the same time, Don, you mentioned it earlier. Samoa Joe's TNA World Heavyweight Championship hanging in the balance here, and it, it could be in a, a situation where Kaz may, maybe he beats Steiner, Steiner beats Kaz, and Joe can lose the title without even being involved. Scott Steiner, though, prepared for that one as he's able to catch him in the gut when he came off the top rope. The wisdom took over youth at that point. Double underhook by Steiner. Kaz able to land on his feet. The Rick quickness. Shot that time with the boot. Explosive move. Two. Oh, got the shoulder up just in time. I've noticed Joe finally able to turn over to his stomach as he's just looking. Look at his eyes. Look at his head. He's just in such pain trying to get himself up. And he realizes, look at Steiner holding on to referee. Andrew Thomas there right, he's got using it. He's him as a shield. Yeah, hooked by the shirt. And that enables Maple Leaf muscle P.D. Williams to come up. And Kaz gets crotched up on the top turnbuckle. That's the experience edge of a Scott Steiner there, Frank. Ref didn't see it, I didn't do it. Steiner gonna try and take advantage of this situation now. The weakened cast in trouble in the corner. Big Papa Pump follows up with a big right hand. Now Steiner gonna try and go up and meet him and does. And from the, oh, wait a minute. No, can he do it? Is he from gonna hit it? Oh, the Frankensteiner! Wow, here it is! This is his opportunity! This is it, off the Frankensteiner. Scott Steiner pin. One, two, two oh, go! Joe just the same time! Just barely. I mean, that was a split second. Samoa Joe got in, and you can see Joe still hurting for that pike shot to the left shoulder. Samoa Joe is taking so much abuse in this match. They beat him up three times, dropped on his head four or five different times. Now he's getting whacked up by Steiner again. But yet he finds just enough, a just enough sense to stop the match from being finished. He's so smart, he's so athletic. I'm more and more impressed by Samoa Joe. Oh! That strength, that power, and that agility from a big man. And Kaz just takes a wicked kick to the face. Oh, the backsplash. Man, he's on fire, guys. Beautiful senton by the defending champ. Snap slam on Steiner. Gonna go for the pin One, here. Gets two, two and go. Oh. oh, and Joe doesn't. You wonder how much, how many of those he's got in him where he can apply the pressure with the pain on that shoulder. You get the belt on the line, you put that title on. Joe's been waiting for it forever. All of a sudden, now you get a shot to take it away from him. He's gonna give it up easily. Here it is, rear naked choke applied by Samoa Joe. Got the Kakina clutch, Here but you gotta Kaz. keep your eyes on Kaz. Joe sidesteps, moves out of the way, and takes Kaz out with the kick. 
just how, how the ring awareness that Samoa Joe has there. Able to move out of the way and then just put Steiner's head into the turnbuckle. He's such a young champion. He acts like he's had this for years. He's not getting out of the way. He's, he's smart in everything that he does. And he never sacrifices his body unless he absolutely has to in any move or technique. Steiner trying to suplex Joe out on the floor. Joe hooked onto that, that top rope so that he couldn't do it. Now, Steiner up on top, Joe fighting from the ring apron. Series of forearm shots. Here's Kaz. Drop kick takes Joe down. Oh, face first onto the apron. Just when you forget about Kaz, he's right there. And he came in, and now look at Kaz. He's got Joe outside the ring. Now he's stealing it. Kaz gonna try and follow up the situation. He heads up to the top. Kaz up on top. Steiner holding on for dear life. He's got the ropes hooked. Kaz gonna try and take him up. Can he overpower Steiner? Oh, man, he just <laughs> didn't have the strength, and Steiner just used that muscle to muscle him down to the mat. One, two, oh, man! I thought it was over. When you're the smaller guy, you gotta outsmart a guy like Scott Steiner to be able to beat him. You're not gonna outsmart him doing things like that. Kaz sacrificed himself a little bit too much in that power position. Boy, Scott Steiner almost became TNA World Heavyweight Champion right there with the pin. Kaz, a couple of shots to the side of the head. Gonna try and fight Steiner right back up on that top corner again. Gonna try and follow it up, and Steiner again tries to fight him off. Well, Kaz realizes if he can just hit it, if he can nail it the one to all, the strength of Scott Steiner in play. He just flung him to the floor, but Joe! Come up and now he's got him up and he hit it. Muscle Buster on Scott Steiner. Holy no. cow! What a display of strength. One, two, Joe's still champion. Uh, Here's your winner. I can't believe that. For him to pull up something like that against like Scott Steiner. Machine, machine, Samoa Joe. I am so amazed by Samoa Joe. I gotta tell you, I've been down on him for years. I watched him train in my gym in LA and I said, this guy, he may, be, he may pull himself in the number two ranked guy. He'll never be the number one ranked guy, let alone the heavyweight champion. Now he's defending his title. Are you kidding me? Timing mean, was everything there, Mike. As he saw that opportunity, he had Scott Steiner sitting up on the turnbuckles after he flung cast out and that, that agility where he hits the knee and then he goes up there and gets him in the muscle buster and that was it. Frank Trigg does not impress easily. But we just heard him admit about how impressed he is about Samoa Joe as he retains the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. We gotta look at some replays of this great matchup if we can, and you gotta give credit to Cass. And here was the, the pipe shot by Scott Steiner, and that hurt the shoulder of Samoa Joe, but I talked about it earlier, the agility the Cass showed the heart, and there was the Frankensteiner by Scott Steiner. And then Kaz comes into play. The drop kick takes Samoa Joe down to the floor. Samoa Joe able to come back in. Hit the muscle buster on Big Papa Pop. There's the follow cover. There's the ensuing three count. And yes, tonight here at Sacrifice, you see that Samoa Joe has done it. Samoa Joe has retained the goal. Samoa Joe wins the three-way match over Scott Steiner. Yes, and Kaz. And as a result, he is still the TNA World Champ. For Don West and Greg Trigg, I'm Mike Tanay. We'll see you this Thursday on Impact. We'll see you in June at Slammiversary. This has been a presentation of TNA Entertainment.